crisp autumn afternoon for football. The Big Ten opener between number nine, Iowa, and the Michigan State Spartans here in East Lansing, Michigan. Hello, everybody, and welcome along with Kelly Stauffer. I'm Craig Kishan. Nice to have you with us this afternoon. They are excited in Iowa City, excited in East Lansing. That's because now the Big Ten season starts. They're off to great starts, but this is the real season. How do things change? Everyone involved in this game comes here for this reason. A Big Ten game, a chance to win a Big Ten championship, it all starts today. An eight-week test to see if they can get it done. Offensively, these two teams come in with different approaches. Defensively, rather the same as we take a look at our tail of the tape, starting with rush defense. Well, my, Michigan State is going to have to stop the run. They've been tremendous so far this year at over just over 41 yards a game. Is that a legitimate number? I was going to make them prove that today. Conversely, Michigan State has given up over 309 yards in the air. Michigan State is going to force Nathan Chandler to put the ball in the air. They haven't had to do it much, only 126 yards on the on the year or game thus far. Can he get it done today? And then the Iowa defense has given up just over a touchdown a, a game. Michigan State is going to have to make plays offensively and specifically Jeff Smoker is going to have to have a big game today. And Jeff Smoker, a uh, subpar performance last week in the win over Notre Dame, battling a sore big toe. It's better now, and he's already good. Yeah, he's he's the best, really, at Michigan State, as we'll see. He can make every throw. He sees the field. He reads defenses. He spreads the ball around. The thing that he has to do today is just come out hot. He has to play at a great level and give his playmakers a good receiving core and a good running back in Jaron Hayes a chance to make the plays. And Jeff has already rewritten the record books. He's the most prolific pass and offensive leader in Michigan State history, and it's no fluke. He's been playing at a high level since he got here. Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes counting their blessings. They haven't missed a beat with Heisman runner-up Brad Banks graduating. That's because Nathan Chandler has become a rather efficient quarterback in his own right. Yeah, he's just stepped right in. You can see these numbers, an incredible completion percentage, but look what Banks did a year ago when he was coming into the season needing to prove that he could be the starter in a Big Ten school, and Obviously, he, had, he did that. 25 touchdown passes, four interceptions, and Nathan Chandler is already on pace to do that again. This guy is going to have to make plays today. Michigan State is going to put a bunch of people on the line of scrimmage to take away Fred Russell, and they're going to make Chandler throw the ball down the field and make plays to actually a very injured receiving core that is very inexperienced at this point in time in the season. Well, the Spartans and Jerron Hayes are suddenly running to daylight. A counterattack on Iowa? Find out when we continue. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Big Ten opening weekend between Iowa and Michigan State. Let's take a look now at our Napa keys to the game. And Kelly, we know Iowa has a strong running game, a strong defense, but they have a very special team. And they do a tremendous job in special teams. They give themselves a tremendous advantage week after week, game after game. Special teams need to be special. The second thing is Nathan Chandler, the quarterback, needs to prove that he can make plays today. Michigan State is going to force him. This is the punter Bradley, a tremendous year a year ago. Notice the punts inside the 20-yard line. Those things directly relate to field position. The kicking average, kick return, only four yards of return. That's a tremendous advantage. And then this guy, the best kicker in the country, 20 out of 22 field goals a year ago. If they even get close, he puts it through the uprights and scores points for this team. The Lou Grosia award winner that goes to the best place kicker in the country a year ago. Tremendous job. And then Nathan Chandler is going to be have to prove that he can make plays today. They're going to put the ball in his hands because they're going to put Michigan State's going to put everyone on the line of scrimmage to stop the run. Can he make plays? We'll find out today. Speaking of great quarterbacks, our Napa keys of the game continue now with Michigan State. Uh, Jeff Smoker, the one game he couldn't finish, his team couldn't finish either. He needs to be on the field. He needs to be on the field and he needs to be healthy. And the second thing is Michigan State, to have a chance, have to stop the run today. They're going to put nine guys, sometimes 10, 11 guys on the line of scrimmage to stop the run. But this guy has to be healthy. He took a beating a couple weeks ago, and, and particularly that hit right there, he had a sprained big toe. And the reason that's so important is because a throwing quarterback needs a right-handed quarterback needs to plant off that foot and come forward but this is the guy stop the run but make it personal right here this is actually the guy that they need to stop is Fred Russell a very good running back productive 1200 yards a year ago they need to be able to stop him to be effective today 
It's been a month-long preparation for the Big Ten opener, and we've got it next between number nine, Iowa, and Michigan State. Today's game is brought to you by Yamaha. Makers of fine motorcycles and ATVs, nobody's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. Allstate, you're in good hands with Allstate. Volvo, Volvo for life. And by Prestone, when you want protection inside and out, you want the Prestone family. Back in East Lansing, nice day for football, the Big Ten opener between Iowa and Michigan State. Let's take a look now at our weather report brought to you by Prestone. When you want protection inside and out, you want the Prestone family. 60 degrees, kind of a windy day out of the southwest, mostly cloudy, maybe a shower later expected, but uh, couldn't ask for uh, better weather conditions to open up this contest here in the Big Ten opener. Kirk Ferentz, fifth, fifth season as Iowa's head coach, an even record overall, but uh, last year a share of the Big Ten championship, a trip to the Orange Bowl, two and two lifetime against Michigan State. In fact, his first Big Ten win against these Michigan State Spartans. He's done an incredible job. And you watch this team on film, and they're incredibly well coached. It's a pleasure to watch. Well, he's really turned things around at uh, Iowa on Michigan State side. They're hoping for the same things happening under new head coach John L. Smith. And a dominating performance by Iowa in their last game against Arizona State, winning at home 21-2. to Talk about that defense off the top. Dominate a team like that out of the Pac-10 no matter where you're playing. Yeah, that Arizona State team is supposed to have a, not only a good quarterback, but a good offense in general, and they dominated them from start to finish in that game. Michigan State coming off a win at Notre Dame, bouncing back after their only loss for John L. Smith. That came against, uh, and then the first season here at uh, Michigan State. 15th overall as a head coach, first game ever against Iowa. First game as head coach in the Big Ten. And Iowa will start the game kicking off very rare under Kirk Ferentz. Nick Cady will do the kicking. And DeAndre Cobb deep and no return there. That ball is kicked all the way through the end zone. And we do have a flag to start things out here for the Big Ten season between both these clubs. And it looks like it's going to be an offsides on the Hawkeyes on that kick. With that leg, I don't think you it's going to make any difference. <laughs> take it at the 20 and save yourself some time because even with that five-yard penalty, it's going to end up probably in the stands anyway. You talk about a weapon. Offside, Offside. on the kicking, on the kicking team. team. Penalties declined. Result of the play is a touchback. First down. Yeah, why waste your time? He'll just put it into the nickel bleachers anyway. So get the offense out on the field. Let him get rid of the butterflies, and let's get it started. You need to set him back to his own goal line to have any chance for a return with that leg there. And in the middle of the huddle, Jeff Smoker will be coming out of it. Number nine, the senior from Mannheim, Pennsylvania. 6-3-2-15. Last week, 13 out of 27, only 119 yards against Notre Dame. But we mentioned that sore big toe. He's about 90% this week, so he should be in better shape here in the Big Ten home opener. Rose to his right, looking downfield for a receiver, has him. Again, Shabbat. And Michigan State off to a good start, first down. As we take a look now at the starting lineups for Michigan State, Jerron Hayes is someone to keep track of a big 71-yard touchdown run against Notre Dame last week. He's emerging out of the backfield. Across that offensive line, on the left side, Joe Tate, one of two senior captains, along with Paul Harper. First down and 10 at the 34. Smoker out of the shotgun. Finds his receiver. It's Kyle Brown this time. And a good pickup of about seven yards. And now the starting lineups over on the defensive side of the football for Iowa. Matt Roth up front. Second in the Big Ten with three and a half sacks. Linebackers Chad Greenway leading the team in tackles. And Chris Smith in that secondary. Filling in for Bob Sanders, who went out September 5th, and they were hoping to get him back in very soon. Second and short pass to Hayes. 
That is inside Iowa territory, crossing the 50 and brought down about the 47-yard line. So Michigan State off in passing. They're off to a great start is exactly what they needed. This is actually the third completion. That's the wide that's the running back out of wide receiver Jaron Hayes right there just a quick screen that's a third completion Jeff Smoker with a quarterback like Jeff Smoker getting hot early means a lot for the productivity throughout the course of the day wait, wait, wait. 13 receptions on the season already for Hayes out of the backfield pick up a 13 and another first down for the Spartans We're at the 46 of the Hawkeyes again he goes to his running back Hayes an important matchup right now is Michigan State likes to spread the ball out, and I was going to have to decide if they want to stay in this 4-3 defense or if they're going to substitute a nickel package. They have a tremendous group of linebackers, which means if you go nickel, you have to take one of those guys out of there that has been really productive for you. Right now, the matchup is in favor of Michigan State with this receiving core and a veteran quarterback. Smoker starts out 4-4. Four for four. We are pick up there. This time, Hayes on the ground picks up a first down. And right now, Kelly, Michigan State can do no wrong. And guess what happens when you throw the ball effectively and spread the defense? There are creases for a back like Jaron Hayes to absolutely start gashing you, and that is what happens. Step number two is this kind of thing right here. A simple play right up the middle, 57, Paul Harker pulling around the block, and Her Jaron Hayes has not only ability to run between the tackles, but the speed to take it all away. First down at the Hawkeye 32. Smoker out of the shotgun. Handoff this time to DeAndre Cobb. He makes a move up near first down territory, and DeAndre Cobb moved out of the secondary and the defensive side of the football. Surprising, now over on the offensive side. And not surprising if you think of the speed of this young man. Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator for Michigan State, said he's the fastest guy on the field and probably will be every Big Ten game they play. He has the ability to take it the distance every time they get the ball in his hands. Somebody the Iowa Hawkeyes not prepared to see, but we'll get glimpses today and so will the rest of the Big Ten. That's the plan for Michigan State. Second down and one. Smoker. Pass complete again. Inside the 20-yard line to Shabai. And Michigan State moving the football. And the thing that you see happening right now with Michigan State is Jeff Smoker is in complete control. He's taking what the defense gives him, and he's going to have to because Iowa likes to keep the ball in front of him, don't give up the big play, make the offense prove that they can move it down the field. And another little wrinkle is going with the no-huddle offense right here and not giving Iowa a chance to substitute. Five receivers split for Smoker. Looks to his left, throws that way. Pass complete again to Shabai. Short gainer to the 15. Time now to look for the red zone, red roof in red zone proficiency. 98% of red roof in guests plan to come back, so see you soon. You know, on hold, that's pretty good, but what happens is when you get 13 chances and only come away with two touchdowns, that's not good enough against a team like Iowa. You have to get it in the end zone. Now is the time to start punching it in. Points are one thing. This time, Shabai in the backfield takes the snap. Iowa in pursuit. And Javon Johnson knocks him out of bounds. Good job by the Hawke Hawkeyes to see that coming. Smoker went out as a receiver. And here's a look at how they lined up that offense. What in the world is going on with Smoker out there? Get him the ball in the backfield. Sometimes there's Jabai getting the ball and running to the outside, which he doesn't really have the speed to do that against this Iowa team. But don't get too fancy too early. Third down and 10. Smoker into the end zone. Touchdown. Wide open. Zeal Cavanaugh. Michigan State on the board and a big third down pass for six. Red zone efficiency. Get the ball in the end zone. Don't settle for a field goal. What a tremendous opening drive by engineered by Jeff Smoker right there. And what we also saw during that drive is Iowa got absolutely no pressure on Jeff Smoker with the down four linemen. If they have to start bringing people, they're going to be in trouble. 
17-yard pass to Cavanaugh. Rainer tacks down the extra point, and Michigan State, an impressive opening drive, scoring the game's first touchdown, and lead this game 7-0, as Smoker finds Kavanaugh for six. Back in East Lansing, there's Jeff Smoker, a touchdown pass to open this game scoring up. They grab a 7-0 lead, Michigan State does over Iowa. In case you're just joining us, a fast start. I hope uh, the people watching didn't take one last trip to the ice box because they missed it. It looks like there'll be plenty more where that came from. Rainer kicks off. A low liner that bounces around. Picked up, not a whole lot of running room up near the 25-yard line. And that's where the Iowa Hawkeyes will start out. Another look at that touchdown, Kelly. And, and the key right here is the protection. Jeff has to step up a little bit inside, but Kavanaugh just got loose. I don't believe this secondary can cover this receiving core if, if Jeff Smoker gets time in the secondary or gets time in, in the pocket. But Jeff Smoker is a happy camper, and that was a great opening drive for Michigan State. This is the guy that has to get it done today. 6'7", 250 pounds. When Michigan State gets to him, they also have to get him on the ground. First and ten, Hawkeyes. Nathan Chandler. Back to pass. Looks downfield, nearly intercepted, overthrown. Looking for Calvin Davis. Good coverage out there by Darren Barnett. He had a sniff for a moment. Take a look at our starting lineups for Iowa. The backs and receivers keep Ryan 13. Ramon Ochoa, he's been filling in for Mo Brown nicely. Across that offensive line, the left tackle, 78, Robert Gallery. Can't miss him. All-American candidate. Six foot seven, 321, the senior out of Masonville, Iowa. Big and nasty. He gets after it every play. Second down at 10, Russell the carrier. Good pickup of five up to the 30-yard line. Tackle there by Labinjo as we take a look now at Michigan State's defensive line. Matthias Askew in the middle. First in the Big Ten with five sacks. Mike Labinjo leading that linebacking core. And Eric Smith, third on the team in tackles. And Askew up front. It's going to be up to these guys to try to stop this run. Third down and four. Chandler back to pass. It's complete. Fumble! Looks like Michigan State has the football. Ochoa made the reception, and the ball popped out, and it's going to be Spartan football in Iowa territory. The second big play of the day also goes to Michigan State. The first one, the touchdown to Kavanaugh. It's a great hookup right here by Chandler. Ochoa goes down, first down yardage, turns around. Good delivery. Hang on to the football at the end. You have to finish every play. That's where the lack of experience comes into play. This Michigan State football team all around flies around the football. You have to protect the ball because they're going to be helmet after helmet coming after it. Jason Harmon in the middle to scoop up the football. And now Michigan State in great shape at the 41-yard line of Iowa. Smoker out of the shotgun. Ball batted in the air and incomplete. Those are the dangerous ones, but credit that front line for Iowa. That's what they need to do. You know, and it's a kind of good case, bad case for Michigan State. The bad is the ball got batted, but he got batted because the defensive lineman didn't get off the line of scrimmage. That's the protection that Jeff Smoker is getting right now. This offensive line is a veteran bunch, and they're absolutely stoning this defensive front that is not you, just your average defensive front for Iowa. They get it done. They're not getting it done right now. Second down and 10. Smoker, quick pass complete. Shabai puts his head down, lunges forward for a first down. Good strong move by Aguim Shabai, only 5'10", 194, the sophomore from Farmington Hills. And this is a good example of a receiver doing what he's told, the quarterback taking what he gives him, and then the little 5'10 guy, buck 75, puts his head down and gets a first down inside the red zone. 
Antoine Allen taking the punishment for the Hawkeyes and giving up that first down. There's Shabai's numbers. Only six catches all last year. He's really stepped up. His new spread offense run very nicely by the veteran quarterback, Jeff Smoker. Little screen pass complete. Cobb's got it. Another good game for Michigan State. Jared Kloss there to bring him down. And if you think about the things that Michigan State is doing right now, is they're doing really conservative type things. There isn't a lot of room for error in there. And Jeff Smoker's doing it efficiently. The guys around him are making the plays, and Cobb is one of them. Get the ball in the fastest guy's hands and let him make a play. Second down and three for Jeff Smoker and the Spartans. Three receivers on the near side, two on top. Looks left over the middle, pass complete. Close to a first down. And so Michigan State continues on the move. Trying to take advantage of the turnover by Iowa. And it's important early in, in big games like your opener in the Big Ten, you have to take advantage of turnovers early. Those are opportunities that you can't let slip away. Jeremy Scott, the last reception, pitch back this time to Hayes. Turns the corner, knocked out of bounds at the 10. Sean can side in there to knock him out of bounds. Offensive coordinator David Baldwin said that this is a thing they thought they could do, do the quick pitch, let Jaron get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and hit it hard because you have a, an active defensive front and linebackers, but they feel they can get to the edge very quickly this out-of-town scoreboard update is brought to you by SBC Yahoo DSL get what you need faster Minnesota out in front at Penn State they're favored in Happy Valley Indiana Michigan just underway in Ann Arbor first and goal from the nine Hayes not a whole lot of running room a couple of yards as he plunges ahead Jared Claus makes the tackle for the Hawkeyes. Loses his hat. And another out-of-town score, Ohio State out in front of Northwestern in the first quarter, 7-0. Frank Prinzel not expected to play again this week. Iowa, I should say, Ohio State off next week, so he's getting plenty of rest as they get into some key games after this week of the Big Ten. Second down and goal for Michigan State from the seven. Over the middle, wide open, touchdown to his big tight end, Eric Knott. He's one of his favorite targets, hasn't been in the lineup much over the last two to three games. And Eric is the type, type of tight end. He's a huge target, but they do a lot of things with him because of his athletic ability. They split him out wide like they did on this play, and he creates an instant mismatch because he's a huge man, and he's easy to find, and you as a quarterback like those big guys, the closer you get down to that, that goal line, and Jeff Smoker found him that time. Jeff Rayner attacks on the extra point. Dave Rayner, I should say. And now a 14-0 advantage for Michigan State over Iowa. They've made it look pretty easy so far here in the first quarter. A fast start for Michigan State. Two offensive possessions, two touchdowns. Only halfway through the first quarter, they lead number nine, Iowa, 14 to nothing. And if your defensive coordinator, Norm Parker, for Iowa, you have to be questioning whether you can keep your base 4-3 defense on the field against the spread offense. We're at East Lansing. Iowa and Michigan State in the Big Ten opener, along with Kelly Stauffer and Frank Kishon. And this time, Rayner kicks deep. Ramon Ochoa skips ahead up over the 20 and brought down near the 25-yard line. Time now for our Jiffy Lube well-oiled machine. And last touchdown, Smoker to Knott. And how can you lose someone as big as Eric Knott down in the red zone? You only have 15 yards to defend right there. You can't turn the tight end loose or a veteran quarterback is going to find him. Mitch Harima, the injured uh, Michigan State player on special teams, down on the field. 
talked about the uh, well-oiled machine. Jeff Smoker, 11 out of 12, 89 yards, a couple of touchdowns to open things up in the first quarter. We talked about Jeff needing to come out and be hot. Well, that that what you just read is the definition of being hot for a quarterback. It doesn't get much better than that. Let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Smoker completing passes to seven different receivers. That's why they call it the spread offense, Craig. You can get it to anyone you like, and Jeff has the experience to find those guys, and he's going to have to throughout this day. This game is far from over. I was going to make them sustain that level the entire day. So the injured Spartan carried off the field. Now Iowa, on their first series, fumbled a football. Russell, and that's exactly what Michigan State defensive coordinator Chris Nealon said he wanted to do. Get him running east and west. Yeah, Fred Russell is the type of back that he is very effective between the tackles because of his patience behind this big offensive line. But if you can get him going that way to the sideline, the speed of Michigan State is going to suck that up time and time again. If they can keep doing that, they're going to be very effective as this afternoon mo moves on. Fred Russell averaging nearly six yards a carry so far this season. He's got it again, makes a nice cut. But again, Michigan State in hot pursuit. Clifford Dukes there to bring him down, number 59. Well, Fred Russell loves to cut the ball to the back side. He'll start on one side, the point of attack. He'll let those big offensive linemen begin to wash the defensive front by. And just like that time, he'll make a sharp cut to the back side, in this case, the right side. Dukes did a good job of being disciplined and staying home. That's going to be important as this game goes along. Third down and 10 from their own 24. Chandler chased out of the pocket, and he will be brought down. And another quarterback sack for Clifford Dukes. With the speed and athletic ability of this Michigan State defense, if they can get this offense from Iowa in third and long, this is going to be the result because they are so fast that Chandler is going to have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. David Bradley in the punt for the Hawkeyes on fourth and 11. He should have some help with the wind at his back. Gio Cavanaugh standing about his 27. And this one, short. Kavanaugh's got it, lunges ahead Kavanaugh. to about the 48-yard line. Flag a flag did come down. And it looks like it's going to be a procedure call on Iowa. Even though Bradley is a very good punter, you'd make him do it again. He's punting a little bit into the wind right here. Actually, it's shifting, so you don't know if it's his, at his back one moment or not. Although... You do that when you've got yeah, the Yeah, that's exactly right. He, First down. That's a, a great point. All right, we're going to take a break here. First quarter action, Michigan State leading Iowa, 14 to nothing. Five oh six to go. First quarter, Michigan State already up by two touchdowns. They have the football in great field position at their own 48-yard line. Dave Baldwin is telling us, you know, the spread offense got to keep spreading out that Iowa defense. We talked about the smash mouth type of football that they do play. His smoker completes it to Hayes as it gets pushed out of bounds. Let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner, Worldspan, official travel distribution and technology provider of the Big Ten Conference. Just getting back to the point on smash mouth football. It's almost impossible to play at this speed of Michigan State's offense, isn't it? Yeah, they're doing a, a great job, but you want you have to do that against Iowa. You're not going to match the physical ability that Iowa has. 
Here they come on the blitz. First blitz we've seen, and that works to perfection. A very short pass. Javon Johnson there in the stop. They expected to see some third down blitzing, but they have to mix it up now. Yeah, and the big tight end, Eric Knott, was split out wide and blocking for Jabai on that time, and he just didn't do a very good job. He was responsible for blocking the corner who was Johnson that time for Iowa. He just let him run right by him and blow his, his teammate up. Third down and five from the 47-yard line of Iowa. Smoker has Jerron Hayes in the backfield. Steps up, throws downfield, and not just over. The outstretched hand falls incomplete. Sean can side in there on coverage for Iowa. That was a very important series this early in the ballgame for Iowa because if Michigan State picks that up and is allowed to march down the field, it's going to be tough sledding the rest of the afternoon. But Jeff, if he could feel that just a little bit differently. He had nothing but running room in front of him. He only needed five yards for the first down. Brandon Fields into punt, and this one bounces into the end zone for a touchback for Iowa. So they will start at their own 20-yard line. Michigan State's defense has stepped up. We talked about it off the top, and they've made some plays already against this Iowa offense. They, they've totally changed the philosophy here defensively. They're going to be pressuring you every play. There's going to be a lot of green jerseys around the football, and they're fast and they're aggressive, and they're not going to give this offense of Iowa any time to let down, and we've seen the result of that already. Chandler takes the handoff, rolls to his right, finds his open receiver, Edgar Cervantes, and he makes a nice gainer. Of about eight up to the 28-yard line. Jason Harmon there to knock him out. This out-of-town scoreboard update is brought to you by SBC Yahoo DSL. Get what you need faster. Minnesota, 14-0 now over Penn State. Michigan on the scoreboard first in Ann Arbor against Indiana. Ohio State now with a field goal added on, so they're up 10-0 over Northwestern. The Big East, number five, Virginia Tech. 10-0 over UConn to start their game out. Second down and two for the Hawkeyes. Russell cuts ahead. Looks like he should pick up the first down. And this is the kind of down and distance that Iowa has to get themselves into. They're a very, very efficient team, but also a very conservative team, and they need to be in that second and short, third and so short situations in order to consistently move the football. An interesting thing last week, Craig, against Arizona State, is Arizona State stopped the run also early in the game, but then they didn't adjust to stopping the pass. Michigan State's going to have to prove that they can stop the play-action pass here early in this game. Seven first downs for the Spartans already. Iowa picks up their first. This one downfield floats out of bounds. Well covered out there with Edgar Cervantes. And that's a great example of it right there. The play-action pass that comes off of a very potent running game can be devastating, but Michigan State right now is doing a good job of reacting to the run and then coming out of it. I mean, this, this coverage doesn't get any better. Barnett is right there. That's his primary, Chandler's primary look. He just had to throw the ball into the bleachers. Townsend splits out for the Hawkeyes. Second down and 10 for Nathan Chandler. Flags. First down, offense. Five yards, second down. And our referee, Steve Patman, this afternoon here at East Lansing. She's second 15 right here, Craig. They, Iowa doesn't want to have to make a living all day doing this, picking up first downs in, in second and third and long, because the, the offense and really the, the whole nature of this team is not designed to do this kind of thing. And they don't want Nathan Chandler to have to do it early in this game on the road in the Big Ten. Well, Iowa has averaged over 40 yards in penalties a game coming in so those uh, little mistakes can mount over the course of a game and they have for the Hawkeyes have been able to overcome them but again this is when you say like we met this is Big Ten season now things are happening at a different speed mm -hmm. second down and 15. 
Russell has some running room. Gets a first down and is brought down finally by Darren Barnett. What makes Iowa so tough is it's second and 15. You can't sell out to the pass because this is what happens if you do. Russell gets up inside and he can pick up 15 yards in a heartbeat. I mean, Fred Russell has been getting done at a high level for a long time, over 1,200 yards a year ago. Look at 27 rushes, 154 yards, 5.7 a rush. And even though you're second and long, if you have a good second down play, it puts you in third in a real manageable situation. So you can't forsake the, the run if you're the defense. You have to always pay attention to Fred Russell. And Michigan State paying attention to Ronald Stanley down on the uh, sideline, their leading tackler. And a captain on this squad getting up uh, very slowly. Let's take a look now at the college football rankings brought to you by Allstate. Good hands make all the difference as we take a look at the ESPN USA Today top 10. Oklahoma and Miami and USC all continue to roll. Ohio State still ranked at number four. A perfect record. How long will the magic continue in Columbus? Iowa at nine. Now, the interesting story about Iowa, they win a uh, co-Big Ten championship a year ago, and they weren't on anybody's radar screen during the preseason, not in the Big Ten, not in the top three, not in the top 25, and here they are, four games in, right in the top 10. First down and 10 from the 45. Russell against some running room to his right. Cuts ahead to the 40-yard line of Michigan State. Pick up a 15 more. And this could mean big things for the Hawkeyes. You know, I was onto something right here. Right on the edge, right behind their All-American Robert Gallery. He just opens up a huge hole on the left side. It doesn't take much for Fred Russell to get up inside. They tried to attack really between mostly the guard over the center. And now they're expanding it just a little bit and attacking more of the corners. Goble to stop for Michigan State. Russell, six carries, 43 yards already. The Inkster, Michigan native from nearby Detroit. Chandler keeps it himself. Has a first down, but flags in the backfield. And it may be holding against Iowa. And that is the preliminary signal. And not only against Iowa, but really against their All-American Robert Gallery right here. He's on... Offense. Ten yards from the previous spot, it's still first down. And even though Robert Gallery is an incredibly talented left tackle, he has a tough matchup today because Greg Taplin really gets it done in speed and quickness. And at 323 pounds and 6'7", speed and quickness really aren't synonymous with Robert Gallery's name, and it was evident on that time. He had to grab Taplin's jersey as he ran by on his way to the quarterback. See, Gallery, he's got that uh, I'm going to the NFL next season look about it. He's got the hair flowing out over the shoulders. Chandler. Pass incomplete. He had some time, and then the pursuit started closing in on him. Yeah, a couple of important things on that play is, first of all, Michigan State reacted well to the play-action pass, and then the last thing is the pocket close right here and Chandler ends up on his backside. They need to be able to get this quarterback who's not young but he is inexperienced. They need to get his backside on the ground a lot throughout the day. Two of five for 19 yards. He's relied on his running back Fred Russell to carry him through this drive so far. Second and 20. Straight back looking over the middle. Pass complete to his fullback Cervantes. And he rumbles ahead near first down territory near the 30-yard line of Michigan State. Maples and Goble there to bring him down. Let's take another look. We talked about it. Chandler's going to have to make these plays. You can see Cervantes going out to the... As if he was going to the flat, he comes back over the middle of the field. And that really was probably Chandler's second look. A good job of going from your primary receiver to your secondary receiver. Pickup of 19. Third down and short. Chandler plunging ahead for the first down. 
So the drive continues for Kirk Ferentz and company for the Hawkeyes. I think it's going to be illegal substitution here. Illegal participation, more than 11 men on the field on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. The result, first down. It appeared as if, as if Matthias Askew was trying to get off the field onto the sideline and he just didn't quite make it and you saw the official to that side throw the flag because he just wasn't quite quick enough. That's a biggie for Michigan State. That's a 15 yarder. So the ball marked up at the 15 yard line. Yeah, as opposed to giving up the first down on a quarterback sneak, he had about 14 and a half yards to it. It's a heck of a sneak. First down to 10 from there. Russell picks a hole, gets a couple. Harmon there to bring him down. This drive that we're currently seeing unfold is really more indicative of Iowa's potential. They like to run the football, mix in the play action pass. If you're Michigan State right now, as they close in on the goal line and get inside that red zone, you have to do something defensively to change it up and try to stop this momentum right now. Second and seven. Russell and Cervantes in the backfield. Russell stopped. Keeps his momentum going and spins down to the five. An outstanding run for Fred Russell. Mitchell and Wedlow finally bring him down. About a yard shot of the first down. We heard the coaches talk yesterday. It's not only getting to Russell, but then it's making a good tackle once you get there. Michigan State has to be a good tackling team today and not give up second and third efforts. There's one. There's two. There's three. And finally, number four and five getting down. That's not going to get it done today. Well, that's what Chris Meelan, the defensive coordinator, was telling us yesterday. You no, know, it's Iowa is pretty basic in their approach, but it works. You have to be basic, too, to counter it, and it all starts with tackling. Absolutely. The most fundamental part of defensive football is tackling. And that time, they whiffed on three. Number four and five got him. And he is just shy, maybe a half of football. Part of the nose, so it'll be third down and short. Three seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, I would uh, say you're going to see a quarterback sneak out of a 6'7", 250-pound defensive tackle that's actually playing quarterback. He must be an athlete that can throw the football. Why not quarterback sneak him? He might take this one into the end zone. Straight ahead. And the final seconds take away the first quarter. And Michigan State, an impressive first two drives to grab a 14-0 lead over Iowa, but the Hawkeyes knocking on the door. That's the way we'll start the second quarter when we come back. Back in East Lansing, Big Ten opener here between Michigan State and Iowa off to a fantastic start. The Spartans up by two touchdowns, but Iowa trying to complete an impressive drive that started at the tail end of the first quarter. Third down and inches from the six. Chandler fakes, throws into the end zone, touchdown Iowa. Mike Follett on third down and short. They go play action and pick up the touchdown. This is an interesting call for a team that likes to hit you right in the mouth with the run when they only have a couple inches. But what that says to me is they want to get Chandler kind of going here a little bit and give him a chance to play action pass, throw to a receiver in the end zone that there wasn't a green jersey on the field close to him and give him a little confidence because they know that as this game evolves, he's going to have to make some plays for him down the stretch. And the extra point by Nate Kading is good and for a career that now ties a school record. His 142nd career point after try. More importantly, though, Iowa on the board, trimming that lead at half, 14 to 7.
Back at East Lansing, Iowa turns Michigan State lead down to 14 to 7 on the first play of the second quarter. So Nate Kading tees it up and will kick off with DeAndre Cobb deep to uh, return this one. It's like a heavyweight fight. Michigan State comes out and delivers a couple of blows, and Iowa answers with a good right hook right there and takes one down the field. We'll see now how Michigan State responds. That was a good right hook. Ten plays, 80 yards, 4-10 off the clock. We can get on with things if we can uh, keep this ball on the tee. It's amazing what delays football games. Something as simple as keeping a ball on a tee. Let's figure out a way to do that real quick. Well, they're going to need to bring somebody in. Yeah, three, three strikes and you're out. Even though he's the best kicker in the country, now he's going to have to have a holder because we got to move this game along here. McQuan Dawkins says, yeah, I'll do those honors. You practice this though, don't you, Kelly? Well, you practice it, but you also, if you dock it, you know you get a little, you know you get a little camera time. You know he gets on the camera, but it is windy right now, and that's going to be a factor, but probably not as much with the quality of kicking game that we have here today. Winds uh, blowing up over 20 miles an hour on certain gusts. The kickoff goes short this time. Hayes has it for Michigan State, and a flag comes in as he crosses the 20-yard line. And it's going to go against Michigan State. Yeah, this is, the, this is the type of thing that mounts real quick if you're Michigan State or Iowa. It really doesn't matter. The little things in the kicking game, instead of having decent field position, they're going to have this back in the, in the shadow of their old goal line. First down. Now, so many times on special teams, you have to realize that the thing that you're going to do may not actually make that much of a difference, so just lay off. And then you have to deal with the head coach, who's also the special teams coach. Let's take a look at our Pontiac first quarter stats. What you see here is Michigan State has been incredibly efficient. The 126 yards, two touchdowns, get the ball into the end zone, the red zone. But Iowa, on that last drive, that's where most of their rushing yards came. So far, each team has done what they've had to do. Michigan State, an impressive opening drive, got the turnover and took advantage, and Iowa's been able to answer. Doing what they do best, and that's running the football. We are in East Lansing, Michigan. at Spartan Stadium, number nine, Iowa and Michigan State in the Big Ten opener. Kelly Stauffer, Craig Kishon with you this afternoon. Perfect fall day for a get-together in the Big Ten. The Spartan Band on one end and the Iowa Hawkeye Marching Band on the other. They're both here as well. One-yard gain, second and nine. Quick handoff. And a whole lot of running room there for Hayes. Okay, what we have right now, Craig, is the second quarter is adjustment time. And both teams are adjusting to what they've seen. Iowa's defense is adjusting to this spread offense. They haven't changed and gone from their 4-3 to that nickel package, but the players that are out there are just flat playing it better right now with a little bit more sense of urgency, a little bit more energy, and they're looking a lot better on this drive. Michigan State playing it perhaps a bit safe, too, at their own 12. Third down at 9. Smoker straight back. Looking over the middle. Wide open. Shabai, first down, a big pickup on third down and long. You know, coming into the game, that is the matchup that I don't believe Iowa can handle. Shabai is that slot receiver. They'll move him around so the defense can't get a real good jam on him. They have a linebacker over top of him that isn't quick enough to reroute him like Iowa thinks they can do, and that's a result of it right there, a huge first down. Smoker 15 of 18. Talk about efficient. 18-yard gain in the last play. This time he's going down. And a quarterback sack for Howard Hodges. Coming from the blind side. Loss of five. And Howard Hodges is really an undersized defensive lineman. You can see him at the left of the screen. He gives a good shuck, and then it's just speed to the quarterback. It's incredibly hard for a defensive tackle to be quick enough to handle a guy like Hodges on a speed rush. Fourth quarterback sack of the season for Hodges, the Ted Hendricks Award candidate. 
Loss of five, swing pass. And Smoker maybe gave it a little extra juice to get it out of bounds. Yeah, that's exactly what he did, Craig, because again, our man Howard Hodges read that perfectly. They released Hayes into the backfield or out into the flat. They've left him uncovered a couple of times and he's had some big plays. That time, the defensive end to the running back side is responsible to release with him. Hodges played it exactly right that time. Another third down and long. Michigan State has faced that a couple of times already here in the first half. Smoker back. Steps up. Pass. Complete. Kavanaugh. And it looks like it's enough for a first down. Javon Johnson there on coverage for the Hawkeyes, but not before they move the chain. You can see Kavanaugh, the outside receiver, the inside receiver, Jabai goes in. Here comes Kavanaugh following him. That's the window of opportunity that a veteran quarterback is going to find, especially if he has the chance to step up in the pocket. It's nothing but a great view for the quarterback to come away with the football. This time, Hayes a chance to run. And he's met straight up after a gain of about three. This out-of-town scoreboard update brought to you by SBC Yahoo DSL. Get what you need faster from the Big Ten. Penn State on the board, turning Minnesota's lead. Michigan extends their lead over Indiana, 17 to nothing. Ohio State remains 10 up on Northwestern. See the mix of clouds and sun here in East Lansing. Making for a windy Big Ten opener. Second down at seven after a pickup of three. Smoker takes the high snap. This time the handoff, Jason T. Finds some running room, stays on his feet. There is a flag down, however, and he's knocked down. And out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And Jeff Smoker standing all the way back at his 40. That's because he knows this one's coming back. Yeah, the, the veteran quarterback has seen that enough. You can see the hold right there. A tremendous play, kind of a sprint draw. Holding, offense. Ten yard penalty, it's still second. And it's always a battle in the trenches. Keep your eye. It's actually Chris Morris, 51, right there, holding, pulling him, the linebacker down. A tremendous play. But that offensive line is working their tails off. If you're a if you're a coaching staff, if you're a veteran quarterback, you understand that sometimes those things just happen, and those guys, more times than not, they're fighting on your behalf. It's one thing uh, John L. Smith told us. You know, they they grabbed and clawed and did all their smash mouth mulling in practice. You can't quite hold on like that though in the game. One way trying to get ready for the Hawkeyes. Smoker on second and 16, way downfield, and overthrows Matt Trannon. Some grumblings among the sellout crowd here at Spartan Stadium. Now the grumblings had to do with as Matt Trannon came out of that break to go to the corner. Javon Johnson grabbed a handful of jersey and prevented him from getting out of that break cleanly, and that's why that ball was overthrown. But again, Smoker had plenty of time to survey the field and find the right guy. Another third down a long situation for Jeff Smoker. Steps up, has enough time, looks downfield for Trannon, overthrows him, almost intercepted by Sean Considine. Had a chance, but this one falls incomplete, so fourth down for Michigan State, forced to punt. And actually very fortunate for Michigan State that that wasn't picked off because Considine was the safety playing half the field, and you don't throw an inside post pattern against the safety standing on the hash because you're throwing right into his face mask. And that time, if that ball would have been accurately thrown, it either would have been picked off or the receiver would have been knocked silly. Brandon Fields punting to Ramon Ochoa. This one bounces inside the 20. He'll pick it up at the 10. And lunges ahead to the 19. So he got nine out of the return. That's where the Hawkeyes will start. Michigan State up by seven. 10.57 to go in the first half. Michigan State leading Iowa 14 to seven. 
Hawkeyes will start this drive from their own 18-yard line. Michigan State off to a fast start. You said the second quarter was adjustments. Iowa has adjusted. Let's see now what they do with the ball at their 18-yard line. One's trailing by 14. Chandler hands off to Russell. Picks a spot. Good vision. SBC College Football Saturday. Get up to speed on the latest stats, chats, scores, and more with SBC Yahoo DSL. Second down and four for the Hawkeyes. Russell again, has a hole, has some running room. Finally brought down by Jason Harmon. He is inside Michigan State territory. Well, Iowa's defense had an answer. The question right now is whether Michigan State has an answer. This is just in your face, smash in the mouth and see what you can do about it. And right now, Michigan State doesn't have an answer. This is what Iowa does. And the question isn't, What's the result of this drive, which doesn't look good, but what's going to be the result on this defense at the end of the day? Because they're going to get wore down. Russell on the sideline. 31-yard pickup. This time they go to Marcus Schnoor. He gets a couple. Russell, an awfully productive first half so far. And, and Iowa starts giving the ball to Russell the minute he wakes up in the morning and shows up for breakfast, and this has been the result. He's starting to find a little bit to the backside, as you saw the cut right there. He's elusive. You can't miss tackles. They missed three of them on that, and they're just going to continue to give it, and then this is the next step. Play action pass, wide open in the end zone. Schnoor stays in there, takes a handoff, cuts up field. Puts his head down, gets to the 40. That will set up third down at about four. Goble there on the tackle for Michigan State. And this is really Michigan State's opportunity. Fred Russell's over there getting a drink of water. You need to shut him down right here. And at least you get him in third and five situation and not in that third and incredibly short. Russell is back in the game right now, so they're going to get him the football most likely. Third down and five. Numbers on the afternoon, 10. Rushes, 89 yards for Russell. And watch the play action right here. Chandler short. Pass broken up. Great coverage by Roderick Maples. Ramon Ochoa, the intended receiver, but Maples is all over him. And I think that matchup really favors Michigan State because of guys like Maples. They have enough experience right now. They were question marks at the beginning of the year, but drop back passing and throwing the ball isn't what Iowa wants to do, especially with the receiving core that has been decimated by injuries, and Ochoa doesn't have a lot of experience. He's tried to step up for Mo Brown. And a great punt will be down inside the 10-yard line. Outstanding effort by David Bradley. Michigan State starting deep when we come back. Welcome back to a sold-out Spartan Stadium. More than 72,000 on hand for the Big Ten opener. Michigan State leading Iowa 14-7. First down from the nine for Michigan State starting deep in their own territory. Hayes, the carrier, gets a little breathing room up near the 13-yard line. Well, we talked about special teams off the top. David Bradley doing his job, getting Michigan State back deep. 20 punts inside the 20 a year ago. I mean, that is a tremendous advantage. It backs them up just like they do right now. Field position is the name of Iowa's game. And one of our keys to the game. Smokegrass to step up. And nowhere to go. Jared Kloss. Brings him down near the line of scrimmage. Maybe he got a yard, so it's going to be third down and four. 
And what we see is Iowa's defense has made a pretty good adjustment. They're playing their zone defense better. They're covering the receivers, and they're starting to get just a little bit more pressure on Smoker out of just those front four guys, which they were getting none of it early in the game. Five receivers set for Smoker. Three on the near side, two on top. Looks right. Heavy pressure, pass complete. And will it be enough for a first down? It looks like it is. Kyle Brown makes the reception. Well, first downs are always huge, but when you're backed up, they're, tre they're tremendously big. Kyle Brown makes a good catch. I think he did hang, have it all the way to the ground. And Craig, we were here in week number one of the season, and hit Jeff Smoker's young receivers were having a hard time hanging on to the football. They've done a great job of catching the ball today. You get a lot of opportunities when you're running that spread offense. It's a matter of time, and you're right, they've caught up. First down, Smoker. Across the green, Hayes open. And brought down at the 34-yard line. Chad Greenway makes the tackle. Mobile Big Ten scoring, or Big Ten defensive leaders. Iowa only giving up eight points a game. Michigan State already 14 today. You know, conversely, Michigan State only giving up 41 yards on the ground, and Russell's already put 89 on the board. Yeah, and the reason that Michigan State is doing so well right now is what we talked about at the top is Jeff Smoker playing so well. He has to be hot and continue to be hot. This one incomplete, a little bit high as he was looking for Jason T. Smoker, some phenomenal numbers on the afternoon already. 18 of 24, 146 yards. So a rare miss, needless to say. Well, I'm talking about rare. Iowa actually brought a secondary blitz, which they almost never do. And that's what led to that. That was a route adjustment by the back. A hot receiver and, and Smoker tried to get it to him, just wasn't able to do it. Only seen the blitz a couple of times so far. 6-10 to go, second quarter. Smoker high snap, brings it down. Moves it to T, looking for some room. Puts his head down and gets closer to a first down. Will be about a yard shy at the 43-yard line. Sean Considine brings him down. Great execution, a great timing, a good place on the field for that screen. Those front four are just all lathered up and wanting to come after the quarterback. This time, the offensive line punches them, lets them go. They think they're onto something. All of a sudden, Smoker throws over their head to Teague. Great job of executing that screen. Michigan State mixes it up on offense on third and short. But Iowa able to load up the box on third down and one. And on the rushing attempt by Hayes, he gets hauled down to the 40. Loss of about two. Well, keep your eyes on this right here. Not only did they load up the box, but what we can't really see it in this picture, they had an overloaded side did Michigan State to that side. Look how many guys are to the left of the center right there. They have an extra lineman and the tight end over there, and they still couldn't get it done. Iowa State player just got off the sideline before the punt. And this one's free. Iowa touched the ball. And Ochoa smartly gets over there and falls on it. It was a short punt. Drew Stanton also down on coverage. We're coming back right after this. Yeah, official performance machines of the NCAA. Red Roof Bins. Save a bunch on your next day at Red Roof Bins with Red's hot deals at redroof.com. And the J-Team, only a Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine. Back in East Lansing, partly cloudy day. Temperatures in the upper 50s. Michigan State leading Iowa 14 to 7. And Iowa pinned back deep at their 10-yard line. Chandler hand off to his big fullback, Cervantes. 
He goes straight ahead deep in his own territory. We can see the numbers right here. Chandler is four out of eight, and really that's good enough. You know, he's been effective, little play action pass. They probably haven't been as efficient running the football as you would think, but Smoker, I mean, those numbers are out of this world, but that's nothing new for that guy. He's on pace to surpass 50 attempts easily here this afternoon. Pick up a four for Cervantes, gets another crack. Straight ahead for the big fullback, 6'3", 244 to Maywood, California. An important play right here on third and short is Michigan State not only wants to hold serve right here and force a punt, but they want to maintain this field position. Remember, Iowa wants field position. Their whole offensive scheme is predicated on good field position. They don't want to have to drive the length of the field. Michigan State right here has an opportunity to get that field position back. Sellout crowd comes alive on third down and two. Play action, Chandler. Throws ball, bobbled and caught. And out of bounds, Matt Malloy with a bobbling catch, but a big one at that. A great execution, little boot rolling to his right. Number one is in the flats, not open. Number two's not open. This is number three, clear from the back side. And a good job by the receiver hanging on, but also by the quarterback, Chandler, finding the third receiver. 37-yard pickup after a great bobbling catch by Malloy. Getting high fives out of the sideline. They're at the Michigan State 45. That'll set up Fred Russell. Trying to turn the corner. An outstanding defensive play made by Michael Abinjo to bring him down. About a three-hour loss to the 48. Labinjo is a lot quicker having lost 20 pounds from his playing weight a year ago. You can't go outside very effectively or consistently against this defense because of speed of Labinjo right there. There's his season numbers. Leads the Spartans in tackles. Does it all, though. A couple of interceptions, a fumble recovery, a couple of sacks. Losing weight was worth it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's been good for him. Second and 13. Chandler, right up the middle, keeps it himself, spins away, and carries the Spartan defense down to the 39-yard line. That's that's a good run. It goes back to tackling again, Kelly. Yeah, very effective. And again, you don't have to just all of a sudden get get all those yards back. Put yourself in a third-down situation. You know, at 6'7", 250, he's not going to rush the ball in a, in a pretty way, but it can be effective, and that's all you need is what he did right there. That size, that weight, tough to bring down. Huge play right here. Third down and four from the 39 of Michigan State. Chandler rolling to his right. Oh, ball comes loose! Picked up by the Spartans. Seth Mitchell, ball is just sitting out there. Play action, this is probably the sixth or seventh time. It looked like Chandler didn't even see the defender that hit him right in the gut. Mitchell picks it up, but watch the play right there. That's All-American Gallery saving a touchdown. That's why the guy plays at the level he plays, is because of that intensity. That may be a huge play by not letting him go into the end zone right there. On quiz, Wedlow poked that ball away. On the offense, they poked the huddle from the sideline with 12 men. Five yards, first down. I'll tell you what, John L. Smith absolutely hates those kind of penalties that are just, just not knowing what you're doing. They had too many guys in the huddle. You can't do that. You can only have the 11 that are going to be involved in the play in the huddle. Michigan State with four penalties already in the first half. First and 15 from the 31-yard line of Iowa. Smoker complete. Shabai at the 25. Gets some of those yards back. Second down and long. Antoine Allen on coverage. And this is more reminiscent of what Michigan State was doing early in the game. Shabai just releases out into the flat. 
Smoker looks at his deeper receiver. He's not there. Take what the defense gives you. In this case, it's Jabai standing right over on the sideline. Second down and eight. Smoker back in the shotgun. Forced out of the pocket. Pass complete. And the foot goes out of bounds at the 18. Jeremy Scott. Jeff Smoker does a good job of seeing the field. Look at he's looking to the right side. You can see Scott down here clapping hands. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Smoker will find you. He's a veteran quarterback. He'll get the right guy the ball. That's a great decision. Third down and two. Michigan State, five out of eight in third down conversion so far this afternoon. And Chef Smoker calls a timeout with 1.12 to go here in the first half. Don't want to mess this situation up. Yeah, and that last decision was a great one. You, we could see Scott standing on the sideline, but the play was to the other side of the field. The veteran kept the play alive. Good job of the offensive line, giving him time. And before long, he's going to find the right guy. And the reason that's such a big play is now it's third and two. Very manageable situation for this Spartan team. Time now for Heisman History, brought to you by the award-winning lineup of Suzuki Products, all proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. Take a look at this. Between Iowa and Michigan State, only one player between these clubs has ever won the Heisman. Niall Kinnick, back in 1939 for the Hawkeyes. Four Hawkeyes have finished second in the voting, including Brad Banks last year. Alex Karras, popular name from the NFL as well. Chuck Long, the quarterback at 85. If, if the numbers that Brad Banks put up last year doesn't win you the Heisman, I don't know what it takes. Because you can lay in bed at night as a quarterback and have dreams about the things you can do and never dream about the numbers that he had. We're at East Lansing, Michigan. At Spartan Stadium, Iowa, Michigan State in the Big Ten opener. And Jeff Smoker back out on the field. And he has to burn another timeout. You don't see this too often. <laughs> wow, I don't know. Smith says, all right, well, we didn't get it right now. Now we got to get it right. I'm not even sure how that happens. That's unbelievable, but... That's the key right here is for the head coach, John L. Smith, to keep everyone on track. What's our goal right here is to come away with points, preferably a touchdown. You have a good quarterback in the pocket that he isn't rattled by anything these days. So, 1-12 away from halftime, and during the break, we'll visit with Joe DeLamalier, the outstanding All-American offensive lineman here at Michigan State. Also head coach John L. Smith. And take a look at our SBC scoreboard update from around the Big Ten and the top 25. Third down and two for Jeff Smoker after a couple of timeouts. Let's see if the Spartans are ready. Kyle Brown in motion to the near side. Smoker right over the middle. Pass complete. First down to Brown. The drive stays alive. Hodgins Steen on coverage with a tackle for Iowa. And that was really just a classic case of putting more receivers in one place on the field than they could cover. Block continues to roll just over a minute to go in the half. Ball marked at the 12, first and 10. Smoker over the middle, incomplete. He was looking for Brown one more time. The coverage there by Chad Greenway of Iowa. This is the Kyle Brown show, and he just comes on a, an in route against man-to-man -man defense, and you can see him flash the screen right there. You got to catch that. Catch that and take it into the end zone. Perfectly delivered, great timing, and, and Kyle Brown knows that. Initially, it looked like Greenway was there to help knock it out, but you're right, got to catch that football. Smoker now in second down. Over the middle, pass complete. Hayes has it. 
about the six yard line. Michigan State will hustle up as the clock rolls. 40 seconds and counting in the first half. Remember, they blew a couple of timeouts, so they don't have that advantage anymore. Smoker gets the offense set. Five receivers. Quick pass, low, and incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Eric Knott. Hodge and Greenway in coverage. And what Iowa did that time is they moved their middle linebacker, Abdul Hodge, over to the left side, and they brought him. When you're in an empty backfield, you don't have enough guys to pick up if they bring one more, and that's exactly who got in Smoker's face and forced that low throw. So now the field goal attempt by Dave Rayner. He's having an outstanding season. 23-yarder, chip shot is good. And Michigan State adds three more to their lead and take a 10-point advantage over the Iowa Hawkeyes with 19 seconds to go here in the first half. And remember how this drive started after a turnover. Points after turnovers are absolutely necessary if you're going to be competitive in this conference. It's not only important to obviously take the ball away, but then you have to do something with it once you get it. Well, so far, Michigan State's been able to take advantage. They had the uh, fumble recovery in the first quarter, the fumble recovery here late in the second quarter, so they've scored 10 points off those turnovers. And I know, talking with the coaches yesterday, obviously going in at halftime, 17 to 10, they would take that in a heartbeat. They've executed a lot of phases of the game just exactly right and put themselves in a great position going in at halftime. Rainer set to kick off. Ramon Ochoa. Calvin Davis deep. And this one is going to be a touchback. So the Hawkeyes will take over at their 20 with 19 seconds to go. You know, Craig, it's even a little thing like that to be able to force a touchback. Iowa is so good on special teams, and one of the areas is kick returns. Over 31 yards a game thus far in the season that's a great advantage if your offense is always starting on the plus or on the 30 yard line or beyond no question about it we've talked about the uh, role special teams plays for each one of these teams Chandler takes the knee to bring the first half to a close the home team has the home crowd on their feet here at the break a 17-7 advantage for Michigan State over number nine, Iowa. What a win this would be for Michigan State if they can hang on in the second half. A statement type of a Big Ten opener for the Michigan State Spartans. They've been impressive early on. It's time to make some adjustments, though. It is halftime. And the Spartans do have this advantage now at 17-7. We're coming back to East Lansing in just a moment. It's halftime here in East Lansing, Michigan State, leading Iowa 17-7. That's the ninth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Michigan State off to a nice start here in the first half. And we are pleased to welcome into our booth Joe DeLamalier, who is an outstanding offensive lineman here at Michigan State in the early 1970s, 1972. All-American here at Michigan State, went on to play in the NFL as well and was a pro bowler in the NFL. Joe, first of all, uh, thanks for being here, and you're here for a special reason, the Hall of Fame here at Michigan State. Yeah, I got inducted into Michigan State Hall of Fame, and this has been a busy year. I got in Canton in August, and now this, so it's been great. I think it's interesting, you know, we were having some fun last night just from the standpoint of do you have to be in the NFL Hall of Fame to get into the Michigan State Hall of Fame? Which one's greater? Well, Herb Adderley's in the NFL Hall of Fame. He's not in the Michigan State Hall of Fame. So wow. I don't know. We need but, to talk uh, to some people about that. Well, you know, I'm just glad I'm here. And it's about the friendships and camaraderie of playing when you played here at Michigan State. My best friends are Michigan Staters and have been since I'm 18 years old. You know, and back at Michigan State in your day, you guys had uh, some tremendous uh, offensive teams, didn't you? We had Eric the Flea Allen, who rushed for 375 yards. I, I think I'm the only guy who played for the collegiate and pro rushing records, then OJ. So I played on both teams when the uh, collegiate and uh, professional rushing records were broken. We had great players. I mean, we had, when my sixth year in the league, we had six guys in Pro Bowl. 
Well, how about your days in Buffalo, the electric company? Tell us a little bit about that and O.J. Simpson behind you. And well, it was fun because uh, we were so young. The average age on that team, Kelly, was uh, 23 years old. O.J. Wow. was an old man at 25. Incredible. Uh, we had Paul Seymour, Reggie McKenzie, uh, Dave Foley, Donnie Green. We were all Big Ten players from Purdue, Ohio State, and Michigan, and Michigan State, of course. No and then Joe Ferguson so was the quarterback. We didn't want, they didn't want to throw Joe out to the Wolves, so he only threw 156 passes that year. Well, it has guys like you in front of O.J. Simpson. Why do you need to throw the football? Well, you know, he's a great running back, too. <laughs> I was fortunate. I played with Eric Dupley Allen, O.J. Simpson, and a, Greg and Mike Pruitt. Yeah. So I played with great running backs. Well, Joe, thanks for your time up here in the booth with us, and uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend here in East Lansing. Thank you very much. I'm flying out to Buffalo tomorrow to watch the Bills play, so... Exciting weekend. Congratulations. You got your play full. Congratulations again, Joe. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. You bet. We're coming back to Michigan State in just a moment. It is halftime. They lead number nine, Iowa, by 10. Back in East Lansing, 17-7 Michigan State leads Iowa here at the break in the Big Ten opener. John L. Smith coaching in his first Big Ten game, a 15-year veteran. Let's get to know John L. Smith a little better. Pump it up, pump it up, let's go. Get lower, get lower, okay? Come on, come on, come on. No one's gonna feel sorry for you, let's go, get running. We're gonna develop a heart, okay? And we're gonna develop toughness. That's been, that's been one of our goals. And we knew that hey, we're not very tough, okay? So that's been one of the things that we've been trying to build. Great, Great. pull yourself out, there you go. Go up and get it. Go up and get it. Go up and get it. Okay, rather than those fingers right on top, okay, right here, can't we grab it here with our fingers? So we're just kind of holding the tip. You can even hold it clear down into here. And it, well, because it's going to give you something to hold on to. It's not a balancing act then. Yeah, we're a little small and we're a little young. Um, and like I said, the good thing about that is they're going to get better. I like the guys. They're, they're going to be good players. The problem is they're going to make some mistakes along the way. And, and we have to live with that. Okay, that's it. Go, 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 go. Ah. No, why, why, why? That ain't where you're going to go. Number one, what'd you do wrong? You didn't attack your aiming point, and then he's telling you why. I don't care. Then you got to close. If he's taking a giant step, you've got to close it down. Close it. There you go, base. Yes. Good. And now what? You can release that at any time and go, can't you? Good. I remember seeing the, the Notre Dame Michigan State game. The Michigan Michigan State game. You know, and those things have always been a dream of maybe someday being at that level, coaching at that level. So yeah, I gotta be excited about that. John L. Smith. Tremendous energy and presence already established here in East Lansing. We'll take a look at our SBC scoreboard when we come back. East Lansing halftime continues. Michigan State leading Iowa after the first 30 minutes of play, 17 to 7. And uh, I guess bottom line, as you look at this game, it's been entertaining. It's been electric. One of the better games in the Big Ten, no doubt about that today. But uh, turnovers have turned out to be a key because Michigan State has gotten them and has been able to take advantage. And that's the key is you not only need to have your defense force them, but then you have to do something with it. And Michigan State offensively, Jeff Smoker and the rest of his compadres are getting it done in a big way. And conversely, it's keeping the ball away from that Iowa offense. They don't have many touches. 28 plays in the first half. That's not enough to get it done. No, Michigan State with 42 touches in the first half of this one. And again, turnovers certainly help in that manner as we take a look and go back over the first half highlights. And Michigan State coming out of the gates on their opening drive in the first quarter and made a statement. And you see Jeff Smoke in the pocket, and this has been really his day. They are able to find the open. He's able to find the open receiver. He's been getting plenty of time to throw it. And then this, turnovers. 
Ochoa putting the ball on the ground right there. This defense from Michigan State is going to make you pay when you catch the football. And more of the same, getting in the plus 20, not just getting field goals, but getting touchdowns. They're going to see this in the second half. If they can get the ball to Fred Russell, he's shown what he can do to it. And then this is the next step, Chandler making plays. That's a tendency breaker right there, a little play-action pass down by the goal line. They've been effective, but they're going to have to do more of it as we go along. Let's take a look at our Chevy Silverado first half stats. Numbers appear to be pretty even, very balanced attack for Iowa when they've been able to keep the football, but again, it's the, the two turnovers and the number of plays that Michigan State has been able to turn out. You know, and that's the difference. How many opportunities do you get, and what do you do with those opportunities? Iowa has been pretty decent at rushing the football. They just haven't had it many times, but Michigan State, on the other hand, they're taking advantage of their opportunities with the ball, spreading the offense out, doing a great job. David Leonard, good luck. You can see the turnovers off of points, off, or the points off of turnovers right there, 10 to 0. Time of possession is fairly equal, but the big thing is the turnovers. How many opportunities do you get and what do you do with them? That's the important thing. And Michigan State is set to kick this ball off to start the second half. And this one will be a touchback. So the Hawkeyes will get the ball to start the second half at their own 20-yard line. And they will be playing catch-up. They uh, fell behind by 14 in the first quarter. They we're able to uh, get back within 14-7, to seven, but now trail by 10. There's Chandler's first half numbers, 5 out of 9, 81 yards, and the touchdown pass on a beautiful play action on third down and short. He's done a good job. He just hasn't had many opportunities with the football. Russell and Cervantes in the backfield. Chandler fakes the Cervantes in here. Will run for it. Turns the corner and goes out of bounds. Not before uh, he is hit about the 28-29 yard line. You know, the game of football is about you want to do what you do best, but you also have to do a little self-scouting and do things that the defense doesn't anticipate. And coming out in the first play of the second half and doing play action is really kind of setting the tone for the second half. They're going to show that they're willing to give the ball to Chandler and give him an opportunity to get it done. So Chandler on the run picks up nine fumbles of football. And the Hawkeyes get it back. Looks like Cervantes go on top of it. One of the most basic things, and that ball didn't even get close to Chandler. I don't know if the, the center caught it on the ground, which happens from time to time when he starts to give it to the quarterback, but that ball didn't even get close. It was shooting out the left side of his leg. Ryan Ferens, Kirk's son, the sophomore at Iowa City. Iowa center. Three fumbles in the game for Iowa. They got that one back. They lost the previous two. Making some noise here at Spartan Stadium. Third down and six. Blitz! Chandler gets away, throws it across the grain, and incomplete a dangerous throw. Eric Smith on the chase, and Chandler went down hard out of bounds and is slow to get up. Michigan State was bringing strong safety. Eric Smith right up the middle, chased Chandler out of the park pocket. But boy, he took a brutal shot. It's going to be roughing the passer. Actually, unsportsmanlike conduct. It's going to be 15 yards tacked onto this and an important first down. Personal foul, late hit on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. There are times along the sideline when a defensive player is pursuing the quarterback and it's hard to lay off. Well, that's. That's right on the boundary. It's tough to see. That's actually in bounds. That's a, that's a bad call right there, to tell you the truth. Let the guys play football. If you don't know, official, keep the flag in your pocket. Iowa now has the ball at the 39. Could be a big turn of events here. Talk about big. How about that hit? Seth Mitchell just lays him out. He said, you know what? That one was a legal hit.
Watch Seth Mitchell come from the inside. Boom, right there. Sometimes that, that's how you get the hit. An awesome hit on the running back is you're kind of blocked by that big offensive lineman. Then all of a sudden you show like a shadow in the night and hit him right in the chops. This time Russell. Not a whole lot of room. And that was A.J. Johnson getting hit by, by Seth Mitchell on that play before. The question for me is, why isn't Fred Russell consistently in the ball game? He only had 11 touches. As a team, he only had 28, but he's going on and off the field. You just started the second half. Keep, keep your best player in the football game. And a big run of 30 plus yards that put him at 10 carries for 89. And that was midway through the second quarter, only had one touch after that. Chandler, this pass bobble, caught again. Eric Jensen, he's got some good hands guys on his team. And flags come flying in again. There was a little pushing and shoving after the play. Greg Taplin there on the rush for Michigan State. And once again, another personal foul called against the Spartans, Kelly. And John L. Smith preaches discipline. It was all on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Just absolutely silly. Losing your cool in an important time in the game. And you can see it right there. Greg Taplin is getting a a earful right there because you just absolutely can't do that with a team like Iowa. So Greg Taplin gets the call. We are in East Lansing, number nine, Iowa and Michigan State battling here in the third quarter, the Big Ten opener for both clubs. Ellie Stauffer and Craig Kishon, happy to have you with us this afternoon. And another pass complete to Mike Follett from Chandler and another first down for the Hawkeyes. Eric Smith on coverage. He picked up 30 yards though on this drive through two personal foul calls on Michigan State. And this boot play is really one of the most elementary plays, one of the most elementary plays in the game. But when you run the football like Iowa, it puts a lot of stress to cover that right there, that boot play against this Iowa team. Hawkeyes threatening from the 10, Russell. All out of bounds at the six. Eric Smith to bring him down. It's time now for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency. 98% of Red Roof Inn guests plan to come back, so see you soon. Iowa this season has done a fine, fine job. 12 touchdowns, three field goals. And those numbers include today. And that's exactly what they need to do right now. They can't settle for Kading coming in and putting three on the board. They need a touchdown right here. Chandler, another efficient afternoon so far. Seven of 11, 111 yards, including a touchdown. Second down and five. Russell to his left, tries to turn the corner. He cannot. Kevin Bickerson on the tackle. And what I was doing right here in the red zone, it's called a check with me system. And you can see Vickerson is going to chase it down from the far side. You can see him flash across the screen. He continues to pursue from the opposite defensive end position, catches up with him right there in the end. But Chandler comes up to the line of scrimmage and just picks the side that they want to run to. And that time he thought the advantage was to the left side of the field. Russell with 95 yards rushing. Third down and five. Chandler loops into the corner of the end zone. Great catch, but out of bounds. A wonderful effort out there. Darren Barnett on the coverage right there. And he did a good job of playing off just a little bit. They're just running a fade into the end zone. And he does a good job of peeking back inside and seeing this ball coming. And then it's a matter of just making a play. Wow, that was close. Get a look at the feet right here. Great, great effort on the catch, but just doesn't quite keep his feet in bounds right there. Field goal, Kading from 22 is good, and they get three back, and the Spartans lead now down to seven. 17-10 our score. 
Iowa moves downfield and is within seven. Back at East Lansing, Michigan State 17-10 over the Hawkeyes. Iowa taking advantage of two personal foul penalties, good for 30 yards, and uh, wind up getting the field goal from Nate Kading. Cobb takes it at the seven. And he gets hauled down at the 20-yard line. This out-of-town scoreboard update is brought to you by SBC Yahoo DSL. Get what you need faster. Check it out. Penn State once down big, now within three of Minnesota. Michigan increasing their lead over Indiana at 24-0. That one in the third quarter in Ann Arbor. Ohio State now 17-0 over Northwestern in the third. Well, Ohio State, that's a breakout game, 17 points. And through three quarters. Yeah, well, they're not in the fourth quarter yet. That's true. That's just how it's been for Ohio State. Smoker, quick pass. Shabbat. That's good for six or seven. And fans uh, wanted a fly coming in. On a late hit, potentially. We've seen this so many, so many times in the first half. Shabai is just really an outlet receiver standing on the sideline. Smoker looks downfield, nothing there, and he takes it underneath the receiver. Considine came flying in at the end, but he kind of pulled up just in time, or it would have gave them an additional 15 yards. Bears getting a little anxious here in the Big Ten opener. Second down to three. Smoker here comes Iowa's defense. Gets the pass off to Hayes. Breaks up a first down. A little screen work for the Spartans that time. And a perfect time for that call because, again, Iowa doesn't want to bring extra people. They want to get pressure on Smoker with the down four linemen. This particular time, Iowa brought Abdul Hodge right up the middle as well, that extra rusher. That's a great time to throw a screen. Great play calling right there by offensive coordinator Baldwin for Michigan State. First down at the 33. Smoker goes down this time and a flag as well. This time on the rush, Jared Kloss of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we'll get a holding call on Michigan State. Now this is a tough matchup for Michigan State. Center Chris Morris, only a sophomore. Offense. Penalties declined. Second down. Chris Morris only a sophomore, and Kloss is a very active nose tackle. They always, almost always line him up over the center, and he's very active right there. Kind of a late flag, but he was pulling him down at the end. It still resulted in a sack. So they'll take the play. Now it's second down and 14. Smoker trying to find his big tight end, Eric Knott. It goes for Knott. Grant Steen, number 42 on coverage for Iowa. We talked about this matchup earlier. When you put Eric Knott at 6'7", or 6'5", almost 270 pounds outside, it creates a mismatch, but a linebacker's over top of him. And that time, he gave the impression he was going to the flat. He whirled and come back inside. Great coverage. Eric Knott still trying to find his feet this season. He's missed most of the year so far with uh, some nagging injuries. The last to sprain knee. Smoker looking downfield. Good pass nearly intercepted. Chad Greenway. Well, Smoker got spun around. Thought he saw an opening and Greenway almost came up with the interception. And for Iowa, if Greenway doesn't get a paw on that, Jaron Hayes is standing on the sideline, and that ball was headed right to him. He's untouched into the end zone. Great play by Chad Greenway, who's a tremendous athlete all over the field. The Co-Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. You saw the numbers. Career-high 17 tackles last week. A tremendous punt by Brandon Fields. And... Ramon Ochoa on the return. Stanton brings him down, and it's going to be Iowa football when we come back. They got three back of their last possession. Let's see what they do next. 
Hawkeyes who won 10 straight Big Ten games, including six in a row on the road. All in jeopardy here as they trail by a touchdown. The flag comes flying in after the break. Well start offense. Five yards, first down. Well, Kelly, it doesn't take much for that either, does it? No, you get those 300-pound bodies, they get down in their stance, and then it's it's hard to to miss it when they flinch. There you go, another official right there. Labinjo's not going to let that go. He's standing right over top of 320 pounds. How can you miss that? He was reaching for a flag somewhere, wasn't he? he says, where's my flag? First and 15. Pitch back, Russell. He's got some steam. Labinjo knocks him out of bounds. And another flag on the field. And we could have holding on the Hawkeyes. And that is the call. So I was really going to be pinned back now. Two straight penalties. Tell you what, partner, you are all over that right there. A lot of times when you try to get to the edge, it's hard to maintain your blocks if you're a wide receiver. They get it straightened out right here. We'll hear from the, the referee. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Here's a look. Mike Follett, number 49, could be the culprit. First down at 25. Iowa all the way back at their 12. Russell keeps his feet moving, gets up and crosses the 20-yard line. Good pickup of eight, maybe nine yards for Fred Russell. It was a good job that time by Greg Easter coming back inside from his defensive tackle position. He was actually working outside, rolled just in time to chase down Russell before that could have turned into something a, a lot better than that. Russell, 15 carries, 103 yards. Notre Dame was able to get 100 yards of rushing last week. That's the first time this season that Michigan State has allowed 100 or more. Make it two weeks in a row. But this time they've got the lead now for the second straight week. Roderick Maple slow to get off the field for the Spartans. He was shaken up. And as we've heard from the coaching staff here at Michigan State before, they're, they're a pretty talented team, but one thing that they're not is deep. And they can't afford injuries, especially on the defensive side of the ball at the linebacker position. Ronald Stanley's already gone down. And now uh, Roderick Maples, number 17, leaps off, leaps off the field as one of your starting corners. Chandler, handoff, Russell breaks free. Cuts up field to the 30-yard line. So it was first and 25, a couple of nice carries by Russell, and they're in better shape here on third down. Jason Harmon on the stop. Russell likes to cut it back. See, he starts to the left, vision to the right. You have to be disciplined if you're Michigan State on the defensive line, linebacker. You have to maintain your position because if he starts one way, that doesn't mean he's going to finish that way. Third and seven. Crowd's doing all they can do for the home team. Fumble! And it looks like the Hawkeyes regain possession. Another bad snap between Chandler and Ferens. Fourth fumble of the afternoon. Look at the nose of that football. A lot of times a shotgun snap with the center is a discipline at getting that off the ground. That's exactly what happens. That nose kind of catches and all of a sudden the ball disappears. A booming punt for Bradley. And this one may have hit a Michigan State Spartan. And of course you can't advance the Muffed punt. Not only you, can you not advance it, but it actually hit an Iowa player first, so it's going to be a dead ball anyway, and probably it's going to be a... You have to give the receiver a chance right there. Interference with the ability to catch the punt, but it hit the Hawkeye guy right on top of the head. Kick, 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 kick. 
on the kicking team. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot. First down. So here's another look. Right there, right on top of the head. So not only did he interfere, but that ball was going to be dead anyway. It didn't matter what happened after that. Considine's reaction is to go ahead and just run. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Make the officials call you back to the house if you did something wrong. 7.24 to go in the third quarter. Michigan State will actually be in great shape when we come back, leading by seven. After a well-played first half, some major penalties on each side so far in the second half. The last interference, a 15-yard penalty, puts Michigan State at their own 48. DeAndra Cobb getting another carry and another flag on the field. We're seeing a lot of the dirty laundry. Getting a little sloppy right now. Another holding call. Two holding calls. Wow. One's not enough on a play. Throw, throw everything out there. Two throw for every the flag price of you have one. in your pocket. John L. Smith just absolutely detests. Multiple five on the offense. Holding. Ten yards. John L. Smith absolutely detests any kind of penalty because it represents undisciplined play. But there are times, as we heard in the meeting yesterday with John L., that he believes the officials can just flat keep their hanky in their pocket and let the kids play the game. Seven penalties, 81 yards against the Spartans. Both these clubs have had to battle through that. The Michigan State thought they had it cleaned up at Notre Dame. Only two five-yard penalties last week. Smoker. Cobb trying to spin away. Cobb. A 17-10 score. Let's go back and take a look how we got here. Smoker, a couple of touchdown passes in the first quarter. Yeah, we said that that has to happen. He has to be hot. He's really been hot. He's kind of cooled off here a little bit lately, but he's getting it done. And then Chandler has been able to answer to some degree, but they just haven't had the ball very much because of how effective Smoker and his fellow teammates have been. To make up some ground here, only a one-yard gain for Cobb. Smoker straight back. Finds his tight end, not. Leaps over the defender and gets pushed out of bounds at the 45. Great effort for not. Johnson finally catches up with him. And we talked about how they like to use not at different places. He's out wide right, crossing the ball, get him the football, and then watch this athletic move, jumping over Javon Johnson right there. Where did he go? At 6'5", 270 pounds. That's a pretty unbelievable move. That's a move right there. And you know now why they like to say he's your go-to guy. Smoker, 208 yards passing so far today. Back at it, needs some help. This time he's brought down. And brought down hard. Jonathan Babino. Michigan State handled the pressure from Iowa very well. Smoker had plenty of time to throw the football, but Iowa did a much better job in the secondary cover. Remember that little outlet that Aguim Jabai goes out and sets on the sideline? They were man-to-man -man that time, so that little outlet doesn't work. It's against the zone where that outlet is there. Smoker had nowhere to go. This time, the punt is fumbled, but he gets it away. Near disaster there for Brandon Fields. Having all kinds of problems snapping the football. Yeah, something smelled a little fishy right there. They were going to fake that punt and go for it, which shows you, you really so? John L. Smith's personality. They're going to take advantage of every opportunity they have, but you have to hang on to the football. And as the special teams coach, which he really is, you can see that look. He knows that they had him. He knows it. And then to drop it, all he had to do is run around the corner right there, fields, and you have a big first down and maybe even a bigger play, but a heads-up play to get the punt on. Fields, 6'5", 219. He's an athlete. Punts the ball very well. Russell. Brought down from behind by Mike Lopinjo. 
Loss of four. Michael Abinjo does a good job on this play, but the key was Taplin right there, taking it on gallery at the point of attack, forcing kind of a neutral situation and giving his linebackers the, the opportunity to step up inside and make a play. That's how defensive football as a team works. Russell knocked back to his 16. Has another opportunity. Maybe the 19. Ask you there on the stop for Michigan State. You have to like what you see out of this Michigan State team. They're not really going to overpower anybody, but they just work hard every play. They rally to the football, which John L. Smith absolutely preaches every day of every week, and they make plays. Third down and 11 for Iowa. Chandler trying to avoid the rush and he's brought down again. Gets a yard, but it'll be a punting situation. Greg Taplin there on the stop, along with Greg Easter. And if Michigan State can get Iowa consistently in this type of situation, third and long, this is the result. They bring pressure, a zone blitz. They're bringing some people, dropping others, confusing the quarterback and receivers. Sack for Michigan State. Bradley the punt, Kavanaugh at his 33. Trying to find some running room. It's about a nine yard return to the 42 yard line. 343 to go in the third quarter. And Michigan State again with very good field position. They had it on their last possession. They wound up with a couple of penalties and they took them out. Let's take a look at uh, some SBC out of town scores. Number 20, Minnesota, clinging to a three-point lead over Penn State, 17-14, elsewhere in the Big Ten. Michigan, 24-3 over Indiana in the third quarter. Ohio State maintains their 17-point lead over Northwestern. Jeff Smoker would like nothing more to increase his seven-point lead here against the Hawkeyes. Forced to run. He's forced to run. He's just hoping to find a little bit of an opening. There he got a couple. Some other scores to tell you about in the top 25. Number five, Virginia Tech, big over UConn. That's in the third quarter. Kentucky leading number 25, Florida. Kansas, number 23, Missouri. Second down and seven, Smoker. Quick pass, Shabai. Caught the ball, went back, and made a little bit of a game. Babineau there on the stop for Iowa. Iowa's defensive front is a pretty active athletic defensive front. If you are forced to bring that screen back inside, you better bring your lunch because those big defensive linemen are hustling down the line of scrimmage. And Jabai's only a buck 75 on a wet day, so he better get down like he did that time. Saw Jared Gloss go out. Third down and six for Jeff Smoker. Michigan State, six out of 12 on third down so far today. Heavy rush. Smoker goes down. Matt Roth with the sack for Iowa. We're seeing some tremendous defensive plays. You watch Steve Stewart, number 77 at the top. Matt Roth is undersized, probably gives up 50 pounds to Stewart, but what he did a good job of, of not letting Stewart get his hands on him, and then you just run around the corner and get to the quarterback. And this one out of bounds. They'll mark it at the... 38-yard line. So and the Hawkeyes in great shape. And where that all started is Javon Johnson, the starting corner, also playing special teams, has a couple of block punts already on the year. He was putting pressure on the punter right there, and it forced a quicker punt and therefore a bad punt. Sure, it's funny when you get into conference play how things change. The landscape changes altogether for everybody. 
and everything is magnified. The game itself speeds up when you go from the non-conference to the Big Ten. How quickly do you adjust yourself? Cervantes and Russell in the backfield for Chandler. Fake to Russell. Chandler rolls right. Over the middle, and flags come in. And we're going to get interference on Roderick Maples. Made the contact before the ball got there. Man, that's really a shame because Michigan State has this defense absolutely perfectly, and he didn't need to get there quite that early. He was, he was trying to make a little bit better play than he needed to. Pass interference, defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul with an automatic first down. You can, this is actually the backside receiver on this route. You can see right here, coming into the screen, very good defense, but the left hand, as as Roderick Maples, Maples flew by, he got that left hand on the receiver. He didn't need to do that. Here at East Lansing, the Big Ten opener between Iowa and Michigan State. Spartans lead it by seven. We're late in the third quarter. Hawkeyes after the penalty, first and ten. Heavy rush, Lopinjo brings Chandler down with a big-time quarterback sack. And I think Iowa really getting in to a hurry and being just a little bit impatient. This is a home run play all the way. It's play action pass, but they're looking deep. You need plenty of time to throw the football. They didn't have that time left with Benjo, and that was really a coverage sack. Great defense down the field by the secondary of Michigan State. Three sacks on the afternoon for Michigan State. This one a 14-yard loss. Back to the 40-yard line of the Hawkeyes. This time they just run Simple handoff to the fullback, but nothing doing for that Michigan State defense. They have come alive. I've never really understood this as an offensive player, a former quarterback, and play calling, which I was used to. On second and long, you learn defensively since you played Pop Warner. Look for the screen and look for the draw, but offenses continue to do it. Defenses know that that's coming. Those are the two plays that are going to come. You just have to defense both of them. Mickens nowhere to go. Taplin and Bickerson brought him down at the 35. So they can continue to go back. Third down at 29. Don't let up right here. Chandler stumbles backwards. Falls on the ground and another sack. And another loss for the Hawkeyes. Wow. And with that, the close of the third quarter. Eleven tackles for losses for Michigan State on the afternoon. Chandler this time loses his feet. Michigan State's going to get the football when we start the fourth quarter. We're ready for the fourth quarter here in East Lansing. Iowa forced to punt on fourth and 36. Last drive just kept getting worse and worse on each snap. trying to get his foot in this one. Kavanaugh has it at his 28. Trying to find some running room and running the wrong way. Good special teams pursuit by Iowa. Michigan State's defense has stepped up this afternoon, Kelly. And Michigan State's way of pressuring the quarterback is not just to bring the front four, but five and six and sometimes the seventh from the secondary. They've done a great job, and Chandler's not... Brad Banks in the sense that he can move around a lot and make plays with his feet, and we can see evidence of it right there. There's Chandler. He says, boy, I'm happy to get out of there for the moment. Yeah, no kidding. It doesn't get much worse than 4th and 36. Smoker over center. Rolls out of there. Tries to pick up a couple of yards. Runs out of bound at the 30, so gain of four. Matt Roth was chasing him out. 
a pretty uneventful play, but what is really wrapped up in that is Jeff Smoker's experience. Sometimes the defense wins, and that time was one of them. Every receiver, three of them, coming to this side of the field were covered. The veteran quarterback either throws it into the stands or does what Jeff did there, get as much out of it as you can and step out of bounds. More importantly, don't take a hit. Hayes in the backfield. And Smoker maybe changing the call. Hand off. Hayes. Laid over center for a couple. This week's passing combinations are brought to you by Cargo. Collaborate, create, and succeed. Top three passing combinations at Michigan State. Banks Carter. And Smoker and Rogers from a couple of years ago on long plays. You never know with Jeff Smoker in control. Third and five. This time a rush. Flag comes in, Smoker goes down. Once again, Matt Roth, relentless, won't give up. And on top of that, you not only get the sack, but you get that hold where they threw multiple flags, multiple holding. But that matchup right now is becoming a problem. Offense. Penalties declined. Walked out. Matt Roth on veteran offensive lineman Steve Stewart. Roth has gotten to the quarterback the last two possessions. Field a boomer. Ochoa picks it up at the eight. Escapes some serious trouble. Fumble on the play. Flags come flying in. What else? You talk about going from bad to worse. Fields rocketed the ball out of there. That was unbelievable. We're going to have to clean this mess up. And this is going to be a block in the back or a hold. This ball's going to be Michigan State's football. Another big play by Michigan State. Not only the punt, but then the turnover off the punt. Fields a booming punt, and Ochoa trying to make something out of nothing. Oh. The Big Ten is actually testing replay. This would be overturned if it was replayed because his knee was down before that ball came out. David Heron poked that ball away. During the return, illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the return team. That penalty was declined. There was a fumble on the play. It was recovered by Michigan State. First down. Wow, this, the Big Ten is testing that replay. That would have been a case for it right there. That's a great play to highlight if you're for a replay because that would be overturned. Iowa, three turnovers now all on fumbles. A 71-yard punt by Fields. He had a 79 or last week against Notre Dame. Smoker over the middle, finds his tight end, Eric Knott. Down at the nine-yard line, about a yard shy of the Tackled first down. This could be a tremendous opportunity for Michigan State to get in the end zone. We are in the fourth quarter, and they have a seven-point lead. And red zone efficiency is up in front right now. Can Michigan State get a touchdown as opposed to a field goal? They're playing the defending co-champions here. They need touchdowns, not field goals. Comes in on the near side. Hayes turns the corner, gets the first down. He's tackled at the six, but it will be first and goal from there. He does his job. And we heard yesterday in the meeting with the coaches that offensive coordinator Baldwin talked about this. The inside zones and the outside zone. That was an outside zone. And what you have to do as a running back is be patient. You have a big offensive line. You let the defense stretch it. And then a good running back just plants his foot and gets up field as quick as he can. Great job that time by Jaron Hayes. Hayes, all-purpose man. Nine carries, 36 yards, seven receptions, 51 yards. Really developing in the backfield. 
a miscommunication on the handoff there, perhaps, Kelly? Well, like yeah, I think, I think uh, Smoker was bobbling the ball, and that was going to be what they call a sprint draw or a delay draw, and he was bobbling the ball. He's lucky that didn't end up on the ground. That might be a good sign for Michigan State because that isn't happening to Michigan State. It's happening to Iowa on the other side of the field. It's all about getting breaks, too, right? Exactly to be right. Successful. That's what this game is about. Second and goal from the eight. Hayes lines up the smoker's right. Now he goes on the left side. This one battered away. In at the line of scrimmage. Chris Smith coming on a blitz from his secondary position on the right side, the left side for the offense, and he had a receiver. Jabai was going to the flat. He had him. Sometimes that happens. You get a defender. You know, a blitz sometimes is effective when it gets to the quarterback. Other ways it's effective like this, getting close enough to get your hands up because behind that, what we don't see in the corner of the end zone was a game Jabai for a touchdown. Hawkeyes have come up with a, a few deflections today. Third and goal from the eight. Over the middle, nearly intercepted, and a flag comes in. And we could get interference on Iowa. We absolutely are going to. Siobhan Johnson, number 26, broke just a little bit too early. A great play, but he just flat That's arrived defense. a little too early. Defense. The ball's placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. We can see a great break. It's just going to be a quick slant by Jabai. A great read, a great break by Johnson. He just flat arrives a little bit early, but Jabai came off the field. He was gifted from a week ago because of a, a sore shoulder, and he came off the field holding that shoulder that time. That could be an important development because he's their key receiver, especially down here in the red zone. First and goal from the three. Smoker on the bootleg to the right. Into the end zone, just behind Eric Knott. He had him. Good looking play. That's so tough for the offense or for the defense down down inside the 20. You know, look at that. I mean, can you get more efficient than that? You can maybe, you know, get a third touchdown instead of number two there, but that play action pass at the goal line, you talk about stressing the defensive coordinator. That's it right there. Second down and goal. Pitch back. Hayes trying to turn the corner. And he's holed on from behind at the three-yard line. Bob Sanders. And we called his name out early in the game. He's been out since September 5th. And now he enters. It is crunch time. He yeah. says, you know what, let me in there. You know you're the champion on the ropes when you bring a guy like him who's still dinged up. Third and goal. Smoker, corner of the end zone. Trannon can't come up with it. Fans, of course, want another interference call. But this one falls incomplete. Good coverage by the Hawkeyes. And now Michigan State had first and goal to three and are forced to try a field goal. Matt Trennan at 6'6", 228 pounds, lined up wide outside. His matchup is 5'10", 176 pound Antoine Watson, I mean Anton, Antoine Allen. Jump ball, but Trennan didn't get off the ground. 6'6", doesn't mean anything if you don't get off the floor. Rayner comes in to attempt a field goal. Going to take the delay of game to kind of move out a little bit and get him a better Back angle. To the snap. Delay of game, offense. The penalty is declined, fourth down. So if you're so, Iowa, so they try. don't let them have it. That's right. I love that. Both coaches in the game thinking about it. Veterans, they think these things through constantly. It's all about the angle here. 
He's got to kick it over to his right and through. No problem. So the Spartans extend their lead. It's back to 10. Thanks to the 20-yard field goal from Dave Rayner. Spartans 20, Iowa 10. Iowa has been a gracious guest here in the Big Ten opener in East Lansing. Three turnovers result in 13 Michigan State points, and they own a 20-10 to 10 lead. In any league, especially in conference on the Big Ten, on the road, you can't turn the ball over. You turn the ball over, you can get away with maybe one, maybe a couple, but you can't give gifts to the home team that many times and expect to win the football game. Dave Rayner will kick off. Low bouncing ball. Ochoa has got it. Lunges ahead past the 30. And they'll mark him down about the 32-yard line. That's where the Hawkeyes will take over. 10-22 to go, and they trail in this game by 10 points. It's been all about the defenses for the most part in the second half of this game. Well, we'll see how they feel about themselves offensively because it's getting to that, that point in time with 10-22 left down by 10. They may have to come out of their game plan a little bit and start throwing the football, not just play action, but drop back and throw it. They're not accustomed to having to do that. Russell and Cervantes in the backfield. Russell gets the carry. Picks a hole, gets about four, maybe five yards. Dukes and Vickerson on the stop for Michigan State. So Iowa, go back to your bread and butter, even though you trail by 10. A lot of time on the clock. I think right now you still have time to do that. If you can do that on this drive, if you can't do it on this drive, you throw that out the window and you have to start chucking the rock around the field a little bit. Pick up a five. Breaks hand off to Russell. Chandler going for it all. Trying to find Ochoa down there. Darren Barnett on the coverage as it falls incomplete. Absolutely great defense from one defensive player to the other. Tremendous. All receivers were covered. This out-of-town scoreboard update brought to you by SBC Yahoo DSL. Get what you need faster. Minnesota still three better than Penn State in the fourth quarter. Michigan will beat Indiana. Ohio State now 20 to nothing over Northwestern in the fourth quarter. So scores from the Big Ten. Third down and five. Chandler straight back. Dumps it off to his fullback, Cervantes. He's got it, and a first down as he just eeks into Michigan State territory at the 49-yard line. We saw Chandler in the first half hit Cervantes on this same play. A big fullback, you expect him to be blocking somebody or staying in and helping the quarterback or protect the quarterback. This time he kind of leaks like he's going to the flat, brings it back inside. That's the second time they've dropped coverage on the fullback. Big first down for the Hawkeyes on third down. Back to Russell in the running game. Russell he picks up about four or five more to the 45. Goble on the stop for the Spartans. This drive right here, how it's starting out, is really the way Iowa plays football. It's a matter of getting a good productive play on first down, then your second and six or less. You can mess around a little bit on second down, maybe take a chance because you're still in a third and manageable position. Pick up a four, and there's a sudden downpour of rain here at Spartan Stadium. Russell trying to turn the corner. Cannot do it. Maybe a yard. Eric Smith knocks him out of bounds. We talked, Craig, at the open about the, the key to stopping this, this Iowa offensive rushing game, but also, more importantly, Fred Russell is to get him to the sideline. That's a good indication right there. Good play on the right defensive line, but then you, you're giving your support from the secondary time to arrive, and Smith did just that. Russell, 21 carries, 123 yards. Senior from Inkster, Michigan. A homecoming of sorts for him. However, his club trails by 10. He'll get the carry on third down. 
and he stops short of the first down. Moncrease Wedlow. Zone play to the left side. Put your big offensive lineman on their big guys and let Fred Russell find a seam. He's a good patient runner, does a good job. Very important decision right here. What are you going to do at this time of the game? And Iowa calls timeout in a critical situation. It'll be fourth down and one when we come back. Kirk Ferentz calls timeout on fourth and one. Probably not to decide to go for it. Which play? This team has to pick this up. The first thing to look for is maybe the hard count to try to draw them off sides. If not, it's power football. That's Iowa's forte. Russell stopped in the backfield. Kevin Vickerson, Michigan State will take over. Tremendous play. Everyone in the stadium knows who's going to get the football. Fred Russell was going to touch that ball, so if you're a defensive lineman, you just slant to whatever side you see him go to. Kevin Vickerson did it right there and just beat the block. Tremendously good play right here. Look at that. Bam! That is the way you do it on the line of scrimmage. Just slant your way to the guy who you know who they're going to give the ball to in that situation. A three-yard loss. Michigan State takes over at their 43-yard line, leading by 10. Just over eight minutes to go in the ball game. Wyatt comes in as Hayes carries the football for a nice game. Likely to be brought back, however. Yeah, I think we're going to see the hold again, but you're going to see this veteran offensive line. Actually, it's going to be the chop block, and what that is is you have two offensive linemen or one offensive lineman has a defensive lineman engaged, and then a second offensive lineman hits him below the waist. You cannot do that. Personal foul, illegal chop block offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. So Michigan State, that's not the direction you want to go when you have a 10-point lead after a great defensive stand. Yeah, absolutely not, but the most important thing, you're still seeing the clock run. Take air out of the football. Don't put the ball on the ground and let seconds tick off the clock. Nine penalties in this game for the Spartans. The jump off to Hayes. Another flag. And a whole lot of room to run after the catch, but Michigan State will go further back. Another hole. We talked earlier about that difficult matchup with Steve Stewart, the veteran senior offensive lineman. Listen to the call right here. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. The veteran offensive lineman right there, Steve Stewart, having a tough matchup against number 31, the defensive end, Matt Roth for Iowa. But the unexpected thing is this comes on a screen, and all you're doing is kind of punching the guy and then letting him rush the quarterback anyway. That's the most disappointing thing. You couldn't have asked for a worse situation after that defensive stop. They're back at their 18-yard line. First down and 35. Hayes. Flag comes flying in. We're going to get a face masking call on Iowa. That'll set up Michigan State just right. <laughs> you talk about getting bailed out of first and forever. This is the way it's done right here. I got to tell you, Kelly, I can't remember the last time I've seen so many personal foul calls all in one half here. And Craig, what did I tell you on, on first, second, or third and long? What are the two plays we're going to get? We're going to get a screen or we're going to get a draw. And that time it was the draw to Jaron Hayes. Why is that so effective if everyone in the world knows it's coming? Big 10 opener between Iowa and Michigan State. The Spartans trying to pull off the upset. With Kelly Stauffer on Craig Kishon, it's been entertaining. A lot of penalties, however, in the second half. Smoker looking downfield. And this one sails out of bounds. Kyle Brown is in that direction. Interesting call there, Kelly. 
Interesting call. It's one of those things where you just want to basically do what the defense doesn't think is coming. And that time they had a double move by Kyle Brown at the top of the screen. I think Jeff Smoker was just being a little bit too conservative that time. If a receiver is even with the defensive back, if you're even, he's leaving. And you have to throw that ball over his shoulder and give him a chance to make a play. Pitch back to Hayes. He gets about three. And you Darren can Hayes, hear Big Carrier. Ten football when they run Sanders the football. I mean, they are crunching and flying around and bodies hit one another. And it's not a contact sport. It's really a collision sport. And you're hearing that today in Big Ten. Clock now continues to roll. Important down, but you got to be careful with it if you're the quarterback right here. Smoker over the middle looking for a knot. Good coverage there. For Iowa. Steen Considine. Fourth down and seven. So not much came off the clock. 6.05 to go. Plenty of time for the Hawkeyes. We'll see if Fields can be the weapon here and knock him down inside the 20. Wobbly kick. Ochoa stops it at the 18. Picks it up. A lot of running room. Ochoa still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 37-yard line. We'll come back. Iowa football in a moment. Back at Spartan Stadium, Iowa football trailing by 10. It's starting to be crunch time now, just under six minutes to go. Ramon Ochoa, a nice 24-yard punt return. Puts Iowa in good shape at their own 37-yard line, first and 10. Chandler straight back. And this time he's brought down, plus a flag and nearly an interception. Greg Taplin. Greg Taplin on the pursuit for Michigan State. Their defense is held up, but we had everything happening there. Well, in the, in the end, a, a very suspect throw right there. That could have been disastrous. Holding, holding. offense. offense. Ten, yards. Ten yards, first down. First down. We're at East Lansing along with Kelly Stauffer. I'm Craig Deshaun. Michigan State trying to pull off the upset here in the Big Ten opener against number nine, Iowa. This is how things have unfolded. Jeff Smoker, an outstanding passing day, a couple of touchdown passes. Michigan State, though, 13 points off of three Iowa turnovers, the real key to this game. First down and 20 after the penalty. Chandler, pass over the middle, caught Calvin Davis. Gets back near the original line of scrimmage. Mark Goble there. Fred Russell, good rushing day for Iowa, 122 yards. Penalties have really come into play here in the second half. Personal foul calls on both sides. And Iowa going with a no huddle. Speed things up. Second down and nine. Chandler straight back. Heavy pressure over the middle, looking for Ochoa. And that one falls just incomplete. Liquid Dukes on the pursuit. Jason Harmon on the coverage. So at the top of the game, we talked about can Nathan Chandler and his receivers make plays when asked to? That's being answered right now. They're doing a decent job, but right now, Chandler has a lot of pressure on him. Those are the type of throws that you have to make with someone in your face. Pressure time now for Chandler the Hawkeyes, third down and nine. Back to pass. Looks to his right, throws out of bounds. He had Kelvin Davis spotted, but Darren Barnett was there on the coverage. 
He had Calvin Davis, but he also had Kevin Vickerson about to lay the wood to him, too, until he had to drift to his right and kind of throw that ball on the run. And a lot of times, as a right-handed quarterback, going to your right, the ball drifts to your right. It did that time, and it went out of bounds. Bradley in the punt. Zio Cavanaugh is back to receive, but not before we take a timeout here in East Lansing. Michigan State, just over five minutes to go, leading this game by 10. A 10-point advantage for Michigan State over number nine, Iowa, here in the Big Ten opener. 5.07 to go. Fourth down to nine, Iowa. Going for it. Here comes the rush by the Spartans. Chandler gets away from it. Pass complete. First down. Calvin Davis. Big time play for the Hawkeyes. But there is a flag in the backfield. And it's against Iowa for holding. Wow. Michigan State's pressure once again. Even when you don't get to the quarterback, it causes holding penalties just like it did then. Holding. Offense. Ten from the previous spot. Fourth down. You know, pressure, pressure works in a lot of ways, and Michigan State is getting pressure from a lot of different ways. You can see right there, drags him to the ground, and that's against a very good, probably one of the best, if not the best, tackle in the country, Gallery. Penalties in this game, 19 between these two teams. This time the Hawkeyes will punt. 4:56 to go. And a boomer by Bradley. Kavanaugh fair catches at the 26. 26 yard line. Time now for the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game. First scoring drive for Michigan State, an impressive offensive drive. Smoker, 7 for 7 on the drive for 62 yards and covered 80 yards in just over four minutes of time. We talked about how he had to be hot. Well, you can't get any hotter than that. And it really didn't cool off yet today. He's been active. He's been in command from the beginning. The rest, they've capitalized off turnovers. Big time hit once again for the Hawkeyes. Jason T carrying the football. Let's take a look at the outstanding back of the game brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Make it Jeff Smoker, 28 of 43. Couple of touchdown passes. He's made the plays when he's had to. He's given his receivers and running backs an opportunity to get it done for him, and they have. Tell you, Bob Sanders is coming to this game in the fourth quarter. Really laying some wood down for Iowa. Second down and eight. And off again, Teague. Nowhere to go. Sanders and company again up front. But they're really accomplishing what they want right here. They're taking the air out of the football. They're taking time off the clock. Run it again right here or throw something where you... You have a veteran quarterback that can make it a good decision, a sure completion, keep the clock rolling, maybe an opportunity to pick up the first down. But your first down isn't really the paramount right here. It's keeping the clock running. And it continues to roll. Near three and a half minutes to go. Smoker taking his time over center. Third down and eight. And off again. T. Good yards, not enough for the first down, however. Brought down to the 34-yard line. And the Hawkeyes look like they will call a timeout. So they have burned two of their three timeouts. They will get the football back. Forcing Michigan State to punt. 3.17 to go in this game. And for Michigan State, you know, John L. Smith said, you know, last year, he wasn't that coach, of course, last year, but he said a lot of these guys played on that team for Michigan State against Iowa, and they were embarrassed in that loss there, so there's some redemption on the line. It'll also be a, a statement game here for Michigan State, a win. They, of course, beat a top 10 team, defending Big Ten champs in Iowa. We're in East.
Chase Lansing, 317 to go. Michigan State trying to pull off the upset against number nine, Iowa. Kelly Stoffer and Craig Kishon with you. A 10-point advantage for the Spartans, but they will be forced to punt here, so Iowa's going to get the football back, and they do have one timeout left on the board. And Iowa knows how to block a punt. They've already had two of them this year, both coming against Iowa State. And they back off a bit here. Ochoa sent back by field to the 18. Trying to find some room, and no room to be had. Drew Stanton, one of the backup quarterbacks, an outstanding special teams player. As we take a look at the game recap, Smoker, two touchdown passes, 28 of 43 in the air. Michigan State, though, 13 points off of Iowa turnovers. Fred Russ, an outstanding day on the ground. And tackles for losses, Michigan State with 12 TFLs in this contest. <laughs> That's because Michigan State has taken the fight on the other side of the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 from the 25. Nathan Chandler back to pass. Looks downfield. Finds his receiver. Eric Jensen. A good job there by Jensen getting out of bounds. Right now, you have to conserve all the ticks on the clock that you possibly can. Remember, you don't need just one score, one touchdown. you got to get the ball back again, regardless of what you do on this drive. Chandler, some modest passing numbers up until now, but they'll have to rely on his arm to get back in this game. Second and five. Straight back. Looking downfield. And just out of the outstretched arms of his intended receiver, Darren Barnett, there on coverage. James Towson was his target. See, this is the position that Michigan State dreamt about being able to put Iowa in. Take the running game away, or in, in this case, it's all about to do the fact that they're, they're 10 points behind, and can Chandler make that kind of a throw? He had an opportunity there. Townsend had opened up a little gap on him. You have to drop that ball in there. Third down and five. Chandler back to pass. Incomplete, it's fourth down for the Hawkeyes. Well, obviously they have to go for it right here. We're in East Lansing, Michigan State leading number nine, Iowa, in the Big Ten opener. Fourth down and five for the Hawkeyes, 2.50 to go. You know, when Chandler gets time to throw the football, he hasn't found anyone open in the secondary. Michigan State has done a great job of covering Iowa's receivers. And remember, the top, top two receive, receivers for Iowa are injured. Chandler back. Here comes the rush. Slips, throws, wobbles, incomplete. It is incomplete, and Michigan State will take over. And again, we see Chandler with time to throw the football, but there is absolutely nowhere to go with it. And it's only a matter of time before this Michigan State team gets to you. You saw Robert Maples go out, look at the game recap. A tremendous defensive stand for both sides, especially Michigan State in the second half. Smoker has his touchdowns in the first half. Michigan State's been able to capitalize on three turnovers and turn it into 13 points. But the ground game has not led Iowa into the end zone. So the Spartans take over, and Hayes gets tripped up and is thrown for a loss. The Hawkeyes with one timeout left, and Bob Sanders is down on the field for Iowa. Again, he's been out since September 5th. When he had surgery, his first game action back came here in the fourth quarter, Kelly. And he came up in this game and made his presence known right away. I mean, he absolutely flies up from the secondary and puts the wood to people. And you would just hope that it's not that D once again if he came back just a little bit too early. So Sanders is uh, slow to get up. 
Boy, all about the uh, Michigan State defense. The storyline for today as it unfolds, uh, especially in the in the second half, preserving the lead with the quarterback pressure. I mean, they have been all over Chandler, and it's one thing if you're going to expect your quarterback to make some plays, but if you are, you have to get him some help, and Michigan State hasn't allowed that to happen. Every direction, every way, shape, and form, they've been in his lap continuously. The smoker bat up, back out on the field. Bob Sanders, uh, some help getting off the field. He had the right foot surgically repaired. I'm not sure if that's the problem or not, but they're making sure that his uh, feet aren't hitting the ground going out. All right, Michigan State. The game clock continues to tick away on Iowa. Handoff, big hole. Got some of those yards back. And more importantly, the clock continues to run. A couple more runs right here, and game's over with. I don't know what I was saving their time out for at this point in time. Every tick is precious. Right now, no sign that they're going to use it here. So Michigan State on third down and long. It's taking their time. 140 and counting. Spartans lead by 10. A's in the backfield. He'll get the football. Jumps ahead. Stopped after a gain of two. And the Hawkeyes finally burn that last time out with 121 to go in the game. So it's going to be fourth down for Michigan State. Here in East Lansing, number nine, Iowa. In trouble. 4-0 coming in. And Michigan State trying to improve to 4-1 on the season. That would match their win total of a year ago. Unbelievable. And you see the difference in the team. I mean, you can see Jeff Smoker's numbers, the points off of turnovers. And that number with Fred Russell right there, 23 carries, 122 yards. That's not a bad number against Iowa, to tell you the truth, because the yards haven't come in places that can hurt you. That certainly hasn't led to putting points on the board. Michigan State's defense has played light years ahead of where they were a year ago. Well, Big Ten football returns here on ESPN Plus. Indiana makes the trip into East Lansing to take on these Michigan State Spartans. The Hoosiers were losers today to Michigan in Ann Arbor. Check your local listings. They're set for a noon Eastern kickoff. If you're in Michigan State right here, there's absolutely no reason to do anything but put this ball on the ground. Don't let it in the air. Only bad things can happen at this point for you if you let it in the air. Smoker back to the shotgun. Rolls left. Looks downfield. Pass. Incomplete to not. So Iowa will get the ball back at the 26. 1.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Iowa gets one more chance. Number nine, Iowa trailing Michigan State here in East Lansing. And that last call by Michigan State, I absolutely 100% disagree with. Put the ball on the ground and keep this clock running. You just gave Iowa an opportunity that they didn't deserve at this point in time. Chandler back out there, straight back in the pocket, looking downfield. Here comes the rush, complete to Ochoa. He picks up an all-important first down. And he's hauled down at the 43-yard line by Jason Harmon. Because remember, here at the college game, you're out of first, you're out of uh, timeout, but it stops every time you get a first down. Now it starts ticking again. We're at a minute to go. Chandler over the middle, intercepted Lavinjo, and he'll just run it out of bounds. And a hit out of bounds by Chandler. A little bit of frustration there going on on the sideline. I think that was just a last-second pop there. I'm frustrated. But you see who's over there to get his quarterback out of that mess is Robert Gallery, the All-American. I guarantee you there's a guy on that sideline from Michigan State that wants to tangle with him. That is, that's just a frustration penalty. But as a quarterback, first of all, you want to keep your cool. Second of all, you don't want to do anything like that on the, 
on the opposing team's sideline. Stay out of that mess. Go over to the other sideline. Go back to Iowa. Get things straightened out. Be done with it. There are the numbers. That's the difference in this game. Four turnovers, whereas Michigan State took care of the Rock the entire day. I'm just glad that last scene didn't get real ugly right there because it had the potential to. And we're going to get two penalties here. One on each side. Well, it's interesting to see where this hold came. If it came after the change of possession and interception, regardless, it will be Michigan State's ball. After the interception, it was an illegal block in the back above the waist on Michigan State. That penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, dead ball personal foul on Iowa. That's 15 yards from the succeeding spot. That penalty will also be enforced with an automatic first down. And to sort through all that, the bottom line is, Lebenjo makes a huge play, Iowa turns the ball over, and this is Michigan State's game to win right now. Four Hawkeye turnovers. Michigan State has taken the gifts and used them to their greatest advantage. They lead this one 20 to 10 with just under a minute to go. Nagim Shabai, a safety for Michigan State as Jeff Smoker takes a knee. Iowa out of timeout, Smoker pumping a fist. A standing ovation here at sold out Spartan Stadium. A wonderful start for the John L. Smith era. Now what a difference a year makes. This program is on totally different footing than they were this time last season. Louisiana Tech came in here a couple of weeks ago with Jeff, Jeff Smoker knocked out of the game due to injury and pulled off the upset in the final play. But Michigan State was able to go to Notre Dame, make it up, and makes a statement here this afternoon against the ninth-ranked team in the country as the final seven seconds will tick away. And Michigan State, it is now official. They have defeated Iowa 20 to 10 and credit that Michigan State defense. They do an outstanding job in the second half. Well, they really did an outstanding job from, from Jump Street right off the opening kick of the game. They did a tremendous job. We're going to take a break and come back with a final word. Michigan State, a winner over Iowa. You think about design.